Welcome to Turner Field in Atlanta. It's a perfect night for a ball game, and the Atlanta Braves having close to a perfect season way ahead in the East, and also they have the best record in all of the National League. Hello, everyone. I'm John Miller, and welcome to Sunday Night Baseball. And we're pleased to see the Braves tonight as they try and get the best record in the league, which will have implications in the playoffs this year. We're also pleased to see Greg Maddox. On Tuesday, he won his 200th career game. He's not intimidating, a la Randy Johnson strikeout pitcher of Roger Clemens and Kerry Woods fastball and curveball puts Maddox's stuff to shame. So why is he so good? Well, we asked L.A. slugger Gary Sheffield to give us his opinion about Greg Maddox. Well, I call him the yo-yo. <laughs> I mean, it's like he throws the yo-yo at you, you try to grab, he pull it back. You know, it, it's unbelievable because if you if you tell yourself, okay, I'm looking for this pitch and it's always a different pitch. It's like He's never thinking like you're thinking. So that's what makes him special. All right. And with me is my partner, Joe Morgan. And Joe, uh, that pretty well sums it up about Greg Maddox. Well, you're right. That yo-yo effect is perfect. But if you talk to pitching coaches and they ask you what makes a pitcher successful, they will say location, location, location. Well, Greg Maddox has location, location, location. Plus, he takes it two steps farther. He has great movement on his pitches, and he changes speeds. And he does those things better than anyone else, and that's why he's so successful. All right, so we'll see Maddox at his best here tonight against the Dodgers, who will go with Carlos Perez. We're at Turner Field in Atlanta. Maddox, Perez, Andres the Big Cat, Galarraga, Gary Sheffield, Chipper Jones, Sunday Night Baseball coming up. ESPN Sunday Night Baseball is brought to you by Cooper Tire and Rubber Company. Cooper Tire, the world is your course. Drive on. Sunday Night Baseball from Turner Field. The Dodgers and the Braves. And we're a little bit late in getting started here tonight as they are honoring Dennis Martinez, El Presidente his uh, family here and he has just uh, concluded his comments to the crowd they had uh, Juan Marichal via videotape congratulate Dennis and his family and his country of Nicaragua for the great accomplishment Marichal of course had won 243 games the uh, most wins by a pitcher from Latin America Martinez bested that record right here on Sunday Night Baseball a couple of weeks back in San Francisco and tonight they are honoring him here in Atlanta 300 game winner and Hall of Famer Don Sutton emceed the ceremony. They showed the various highlights from Martinez career including his perfect game and uh, then we had the comments from Dennis himself. Yesterday the first game of this series the Braves defeated the Dodgers seven to five but there was bad blood. Andres Galarraga uh, was ejected after he was hit by a pitch thrown by Darren Dreyford the week before in L.A. Dryford had hit him as you see here. Well I think the problem here is look at Dryford he walks down he says something to Galarraga and then yesterday hits him again and Galarraga says hey I've had enough of it and he was serious when he went to the mound. But, but as in most fights most guys are OK and uh, most of the players are always trying to break up the fights. Well, Galarraga is tied for second in the league and uh, most times being hit by a pitch. And uh, Galarraga, perhaps unlike, say, Craig Biggio, for instance, who's a leadoff man whose job is to get on base, Galarraga doesn't ever like to get hit by a pitch. And it's become rather controversial here, but around the National League as well, because after he was hit by a pitch earlier this week in a game with San Francisco, he said afterward that uh, he had had it with being hit by pitches. And the next time, he didn't care if it was a a fastball or a changeup or a curveball or what he was going to go after the pitcher. So he sort of announced it in advance. Well the next time was yesterday when Dreyford got him. But again as you saw there and as Joe mentioned there were extenuating circumstances. There was a, a previous bit of history between Galarraga and Dreyford. Well I believe that if a pitcher comes off the mound and he challenges you and that's the way the Braves felt that when he in L.A. Dreyford came down off the mound and he challenged Galarraga. Galarraga kept his head that day and went to first base. But when he was hit the next time at bat by the same pitcher who had challenged him, he decided he had to go to the mound. So the question is, who actually instigated the incident? Was it Dreyford or was it Galarraga? 
Uh, I personally believe if a pitcher hits the guy, he should have to stay on the mound. If he walks down towards home plate or walks toward the hitter who's going to first base, that's pretty much a challenge. And the players are not going to accept it and let that go. So uh, I think that you're right. There are some circumstances that need to be viewed here on behalf of Galarraga as well as I don't ever advocate a guy going to the mound. That's that's you know unless he feels like he has to that's his problem. But I think there also needs to be some rules for the pitchers as well. Well and again uh, Chipper Jones for instance uh, concurred that he thought the whole thing stemmed from the week before and not just the fact that he was hit by a pitch by Dreyford but Dreyford's actions afterward and the Dreyford for his part yesterday denied that there was any malice of forethought that he was just trying to work inside and that's part of the controversy with Galarraga because uh, as Dusty Baker said the manager of the Giants the other day and actually talked to Galarraga about this and he said hey you've got to learn how to get out of the way I mean he lunges into pitches and uh, the feeling is is that he's not very adept at getting out of the way and that pitches are going to have to pitch him inside to have success with him. Well it's interesting because he stands close to the plate and he does lean in a little bit. Mark McGuire also stands very close to the plate but McGuire has only been hit five times this year which tells you that either he can get out of the way better or you know he's not as susceptible to being hit on pitches inside but they both stand very close to the plate for power hitters and uh, there's a big dis difference in the number of times they've been hit. I think the uh, the argument with Ganaraga is that because of the way he starts with that open stance and then lunges that kind of freezes him in terms of being able to get out of the way. So we're still a few moments away from getting started here in Atlanta. Greg Maddox and the Braves against the Dodgers will be right back. Turner Field in Atlanta. And uh, most everybody here in Atlanta seems to love this new ballpark. In fact, they're a guy who used to go Ready. to the old Ponce de Leon ballpark here in the days of minor league baseball in Atlanta. And uh, and he said this park gave him the feeling of the old Ponce de Leon ballpark. There was a certain intimacy to the old ballpark. And he said, although this park is much bigger, he still felt the, the intimacy of the old ballpark. Well, John, I, I am not old enough to have played in the Ponce de Leon ballpark, so I'll accept your explanation of they that. They told me that you hit the first home run there. No, no, that was the Astrodome. You're getting them mixed up now. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. The Ponce de Leon Astrodome. Astrodome. <laughs> Greg Maddox and the Ponce de Leon, perhaps is uh, apropos here as he was looking for the fountain of youth. And uh, Greg Maddox is now 100 wins away from 300. If he could average 16 wins a year after this year and pitch uh, until he's 38 at that capability, well, that would put him at 300 wins. But uh, will his skills remain with him that long and at that level? That's the question that we'll all be watching in these years to come with Greg Maddox. Here's the Pepsi Dodgers batting order. Eric Young leads off at second base. It'll be Jim Eisenreich in left field. And none of these Dodgers has really had much success with Greg Maddox. And of course, just join a long list of teams that don't do well against him. Raul Mondesi, center field. Gary Sheffield is hitting cleanup in right field. Eric Karras at first base. Bobby Bonilla is at third base. Mark Resolanik at shortstop, acquired from the Montreal Expos. Charles Johnson is the catcher hitting eighth and uh, Carlos Perez the left hander also from Montreal is the pitcher batting ninth and the Braves take the field now and Greg Maddox 32 years of age heads out to the mound Maddox will be in search of his 17th win of the year tonight Greg Maddox who has that great movement 16 wins six losses a 1.65 Earned run average, 206 and two thirds innings, and only 153 hits allowed, and only seven home runs given up. Never more than one in any game. We asked him about his pitching repertoire. Well, just fastball. Just uh, hopefully throw it <laughs> knee high, somewhere knee high. If it's on the corner, great. But if it's knee high, that's okay too. Uh, I try to throw. A, uh, I have a slider that I throw to lefties off uh, my index finger. 
And then I have the Wonder Righties off the middle finger. The one off the middle finger breaks a little bit more and uh, is a little bit slower. And then I have uh, change up. Just circle change, kind of like that. Launch it. And uh, occasional curveball. Well, and he can throw any of those pitches for a strike at any time in a ball game. But the point is he throws a lot more fastballs than people realize. He just moves it off in and out of the strike zone. Well, he's won several gold gloves. I mean, he is a, he a, looks like a hockey player out there. He will kick some with his foot to stop the ball, but he is a very great, a good feeling pitcher with eight gold gloves, but he will do anything to stop the ball back through the middle. So here we go. Eric Young stands in, and there's a first sinker for a called strike. We had to just start the game with a count of 0 1, Joe, with <laughs> Maddox on the mound. Because he does anyway. Young hitting 291. That one is just off the outside. The Dodgers, these are the days of their discontent for sure. There's that slider that he was talking about. One ball and two strikes. Tyson Rank and Mondesi to follow. Glenn Hoffman, the new manager of the Dodgers, but he has had no more success than his predecessor, Bill Russell. In the right field, drifting back, Gerald Williams. And there is one away. That's pretty good contact by Eric Young against Maddox. But there are a lot of people that say right handers need to go the other way because he stays away most of the time. But if he feels like you're going that way, he will pitch you inside. I mean, he uses the entire plate. And as Gary Sheffield said in our open, you really can't think with him. You know, you just have to react. Why not? Nobody on. Jim Eisenreich. Low. One ball and no strikes. John, I've always felt the approach you have to take with great pitchers is you have to give them something and take something away. Either you have to look for the ball middle out or middle in. That's a foul. And control that part of the plate. And you can change on pitches. For instance, you can look middle in on the first pitch. You can look middle away on the second pitch. But I believe that you have to have a zone that you're covering against a guy like Maddox. You can't let him just use the entire plate and you try to hit everything. And that's back out of play. One ball and two strikes. That's an example there. A lot of times because he makes such good pitches he gets away when he doesn't make a great pitch. That was a fastball right in the middle of the plate but maybe Eisenreich was trying to cover the entire plate instead of covering middle end on that pitch. One and two. Shallow center. And uh, Andrew Jones out of the two. Whenever he gets two strikes on you, he will make sure that you hit something out of the strike zone. That pitch there started in the strike zone, with, but the sinking action took it out of the strike zone. And with two strikes, you have to go because you can't take pitches that are close. Now the Dodger power. With two down and nobody on. Raul Mondesi. Sheffield out on deck. Then Eric Karras. But the Dodgers' biggest, most productive sluggers are struggling right now. Mondesi. Having a good year overall, 28 homers, 80 runs batted in, but he has uh, hit only tw uh, 226 in his last 13 games, and he's the best of the the three sluggers in that time. That's ruled no swing by first base umpire Larry Vanover. Eric Karras has only two RBIs in his last 16 games. Gary Sheffield has only one RBI in his last 12 games. Mondesi. Unlike most of his teammates, has had success with Maddox. But look at that pitch. Breaking back over the outside corner. And he threw it hard. Hard for Maddox, 89 miles an hour. Right through Maddox's legs, base hit to center field. Well, Montesi continues to succeed against Greg Maddox. Now eight for 16 lifetime against. Him. Well, if he makes a mistake, you have to hit it. This is a high fastball. He's supposed to be away. Now watch where it is. That's in the middle of the plate and up. So you have to hit it if he makes a mistake. We saw Eisenreich get a fastball down the middle and he fouled it back. You can't do that and hit Maddox. If he makes a mistake, you have to take advantage of it because he does not make a lot of mistakes. Gary Sheffield, the last 15 days, hitting only 184 with one homer and one RBI. And that's ball one down and away. 
On the other hand, Sheffield is the only regular starter in the Dodgers roster who has both a higher batting average and more home runs up to this point this season than he had last year. Everybody else has shown a decline this year. Good battle right here. With Gary Sheffield was just one of the great sluggers, one of the quickest bats. But how much does a quick bat help you against Greg Maddox? Well, I think it helps you a lot because you can actually wait a little longer. A quick bat always helps you if you, you know, use it the proper way. It tells you that you have a split second longer to try to recognize the pitch. Going on the play, Mondes, the throw right there, and Perez has thrown him out. Graffinito making the tag. Sheffield will have to start the next inning. The Braves are coming up. No score. Dodgers nothing. Braves coming up. Sunset in Atlanta. Here's the Pepsi Braves batting order. Walt Weiss is at shortstop. Gerald Williams right field. Chipper Jones at third base. It'll be Andres Ganaraga hitting cleanup at first base. And he is second in the majors only to Juan Gonzalez the last three years for driving in runs. Andrew Jones in center field. Eddie Perez the catcher. Daniel Bautista left field hitting seventh. Tony Graffinino is at second base. And Greg Maddox is the pitcher batting ninth. On the mound for the Dodgers is the left-hander, very uh, colorful character, Carlos Perez. And he is colorful, John. And he, I enjoy watching him pitch. He changes speeds a lot, but he's very animated on the mound. He enjoys what he's doing. And he's a good pitcher. Has a great straight changeup, and he throws strikes. That's the key to his success. He throws strikes. Between innings, Bobby Cox was out having a, a long conversation with Eric Gregg and the crew chief, Bruce Fremick. And uh, then uh, after the discussion, Glenn Hoffman was also in on the discussion later on. Well, Carlos he, Perez removed the, the jewelry. Well, with that piece of jewelry might have weighed him down. He may throw harder tonight. <laughs> Take that <laughs> off. That was a pretty big, hey, that was some heavy gold there. Here's Walt Weiss. And the fastball is called a strike in his 0 and 1. And you see how Perez works. He's very similar to Maddox. He has good control, hits the outside corner, and he changes speeds a lot. Fastball missing. One ball, one strike to Walt Weiss, the former Colorado Rocky, 294 average, and a 390 on base average. And he has a great addition to the Braves at the top of the batting order. But a spot where they were rather concerned about getting somebody who's going to get on base in front of the sluggers. And Weiss has done a better job of it, I think, than they than they dare hope. Here's the ball too low, the changeup. Two and two to Walt Weiss. They've got an all right-handed batting order in there against Perez. It'll be nine consecutive right-handed swingers against him. Ball is too low. Full count down. Now Perez has had a hard time here of late, and he's been walking people lately. He's walked 12 batters in his last four starts. That's as many as he's walked in his last 11 starts with, with the, the Expos. Expos. Yeah. yeah. And there's a walk to start the game. Well, let's take a look at the Dodgers defense. Raul Mondesi was the right fielder last year. He's won a couple of gold gloves playing right field. Now they have moved him to center field, and he's done a great job. He has adjusted well, and it has not affected his offense. So uh, he's done a good job there in center field for the Dodgers. Now Gerald Williams. Right-handed hitter. Wants it, but foul. Now after Williams they get into the, the serious power Chipper Jones Andres got a rocket Andrew Jones although it's ironic whenever Greg Maddox pitches their lineup is not nearly so powerful because Javi Lopez never catches Eddie Perez always does the catching of Maddox and when Lopez sits that's 25 home runs that sits with him. And John, they have not scored a lot of runs for Maddox lately. He's four and four in his last, you know, eight decisions. So
so they have not been scoring a lot of runs for him. And sometimes you have to wonder the fact that Javi Lopez is out of there takes, like you said, one of the big bats out of the lineup. Well, no not wonder Maddox is only 16 and 6. Right. He's lost four, you know, of his last eight decisions. He's a hard luck pitcher. <laughs> He's only 16 and 6. Change up. Tough play for Bonilla, but it's a foul ball. And the Dodgers get a little lucky there, I think, because if that's a fair ball, Bonilla's going to have a difficult time throwing Williams out at first base. Glenn Hoffman, who broke into the big leagues, playing a lot of third base with the Boston Red Sox. Although his natural position was shortstop, and he moved to short a year later with Boston. 0-2 to Gerald Williams. Twice at first. Time taken. John, I think Gerald Williams is a big, big key to the Braves' chances in the postseason because he's going to be in there against left-handers, and in the past, they have been vulnerable to left-handers in the playoffs because of their left-handed lineup. But what you see now is they take Klesko out, and they take Michael Tucker out, and they put Bautista in and Gerald Williams. And I think Gerald Williams is going to be the key to their success against some of these left-handed starters that they may face in the playoffs. Going to the count. And he curved him, but too low. One ball, two strikes. Well, Williams is hitting 288 overall and much of that against left handers although he had a great beginning of the season against left handers and he hit over 500 his first 41 at bats against the lefties only 269 since then See, I, I got our statistical info Joe and I like read through it this uh, week okay I read through it too John but I didn't I didn't like that statistic <laughs> The reason I didn't like it is because if you hit 500 at the beginning of the season, you're gonna have to hit, you have to slow off, slack off. I mean, if you go 20 for your first 40, I mean, you can't keep going 20 for 40. You'd set a major league record for batting average. Well, I was thinking if he's the key, it'd be helpful if he went 20 for 40. <laughs> this could be two. They get one there. Young back to first. Double play. Nice turn there at second base by Young. He and Grezelonic made a good double play turn there. Nice feed from Grezelonic, and Young turned it over. Do that, nobody out. When the ball is hit near the bag, most right-handers are going to be out. They're only they're, here's a short throw and then a long throw. When you have two long throws, you have a chance of beating it out. But when you have a short throw in there like that, most of the time it's going to be a double play. Chipper Jones now, he's got 30 home runs, 97 runs batted in. And a 324 average, but only two of his home runs have been hit right handed. Too far in with that cut fastball, two balls, no strike. I asked Chipper about that. He said originally he was a right handed hitter, but he bats so many more times batting left handed, he feels that lefty is really his natural side now. That is a called strike, and he says, Batting right-handed, even though he's got a good batting average right-handed, because he has to work like crazy every time he bats right-handed. Everything just seems so much more natural for him batting left. -handed. Base hit. Matt Luke cuts it off and does a great job of holding Chipper Jones to a single. Man, that was impressive. I said Matt Luke Eisenreich in left field today. He was Luke like on that one. <laughs> well, this is a low fastball, and I mean, he really nails it. This ball is hit so hard that you see Bobby Bonilla doesn't have a lot of time to react. It's actually past him. He got the glove up high enough, but the ball was past him before he could get there. But just a great play down there by Eisenreich to hold him to a single. Jim Eisenreich still moving pretty well for an old guy. Now here's Andres Galarraga. Ball. Too low. I think it was a pretty wise idea after what happened yesterday to start start try to work him outside. <laughs> Galarraga, 39 homers, 103 runs battered in. Ooh, another curveball. One ball, one strike. 
He has such great delivery and motion with the curveball. I mean, he has great arm speed. Watch this. That's the key to an off-speed pitch, and especially a slow curveball as he throws. You have to have good arm speed to fool the hitter. And you have to have the good arm speed to make the ball break that much when you throw it that slowly. That one is belted. Deep into left center field. That one is number 40. Should have thrown him another slow curveball. After throwing him two off-speed pitches, he tried to come inside with a fastball, and he did not get it there quick enough. And Galarraga put a charge into it. That was just a kind of a line drive. That wasn't even a real big fly. That was a line drive home run. Two nothing Atlanta, and Andres Galarraga had just reached a milestone. Last year, he was better than 40 homers for the Colorado Rockies, and now for a different team, he's hit 40 again. As a strike to Andrew Jones. That makes him the first man in the history of Major League Baseball to reach the 40 home run mark for different teams in consecutive seasons. One strike to count. Change up misses. One ball, one strike to Andrew Jones. Also, Jones, or Galarraga, after being hit yesterday, Joe, has to feel pretty good about coming back. This sort of the perfect response a day later. Well, you're right. I think they ought to pitch him inside, though. <laughs> they uh, estimated the distance on that one of 414 feet. He hung that curveball up there, and Andrew Jones has a base hit. Well, you see the target from Charles Johnson. The pitch moves back out over the plate. And Galarraga puts a charge into it. It was supposed to be inside, and it tailed back over the plate. And see you later. 40 homers and 105 runs batted in for Galarraga this year. Here is Eddie Perez from Maracaibo, Venezuela. On one the count. To get to the curveball. Perez now faced five hitters in the inning. He's only retired one of them. That one is hit deep down the left field line. If it's fair, it's gone. It is gone. Another home run. Four nothing Atlanta. John, the Braves lead the league in home runs, and this is, wasn't supposed to be a hitter's ballpark. After the first couple of months last year, they thought it was a big ballpark, but now they say that the ball carries very well here, and that was their 173rd home run of the season. Again, he misses his location. That was supposed to be away, and it was a breaking ball that kind of hung on the inside part of the plate. So four runs are in, two two-run homers in the inning, and this started with two down and nobody on. Oh, and two the count to Bautista, hitting 231, three home runs and 121 at bats. Carlos Perez giving up the long ball. 17 home runs allowed this year. Changeup misses. And two strikes. And you really have to worry if you're the Dodgers, you give up four runs to Greg Maddox this early in the ball game. Well, if you give up four runs to Maddox and it was the, the seventh, then it would be bad. I don't like their chances all of a sudden, Joe. Two and two the count, although Maddox, they usually don't score for him. Well, that's, that's true, but now it gives him a chance to know that he can make some mistakes and still, you know. Keep the lead. The screen. Good fastball that 
time. Two balls, two strikes. And Perez going deep. Now watch this pitcher. Suppose watch the catcher's glove outside and it's inside. And Perez says, gotcha. And he hits it right down the line for his fourth home run of the season. And the strikeout. And you saw Carlos Perez getting very excited about it. And I'm happy he could get excited about something in that inning. Gary Sheffield coming up. Four nothing. Galarraga and Perez going deep. That ball is belted deep to left field by Sheffield, and that ball is gone. Gary Sheffield on the first pitch of the second inning goes deep against Greg Maddox. So Sheffield, who was up there when Mondesi was thrown out attempting to steal to win the first inning, Gets another shot at him and hits the first ball out of the ballpark here in the second inning, and it is four to one Atlanta. And John, this is exactly what you asked me about what bat speed help, how it helps you. But watch this pitch is inside, and he actually gets the ball on Sheffield, but Sheffield is so quick inside, he he pulls his hands in. Watch him pull his arms in, and he gets to this pitch. This is why the bat speed helps. Well, back to live action. Eric Karras takes a call strike. Sorry, Joe, that's our policy. Live pitch coming in, and we're back on it. And that one just misses. One ball, one strike to Eric Karras. 281, 15 homers, 66 driven in. That's deep into right field. Gerald Williams way back there, and this one is gone. Consecutive home runs against Greg Maddox. It's the first time all season that he has given up more than one home run in a whole game. He had only given up two home runs in his last 14 starts. And now he gives up two home runs to two batters. And if you're Eric Carroll's this good news, bad news story with him and Maddox. He was 0 for his first 20, and now this makes him 3 for his last 8. That's the good news. And again, it's a fastball up. And in the first inning, we talked about Maddox making a few mistakes. He got a couple of balls in the middle of the plate. And the big sluggers have made him play for those mistakes so far here in the second inning. Bobby Bonilla, two balls, no strikes. 21st home run for Sheffield, the 16th home run for Karras. And both of them had been slumping here of late, so I guess if you're the Dodgers, you feel like they were about due to break out. Yeah, but can you imagine going 0 for 20 against a guy like at the start of your career against him? As Carroll's did, and now to be three for eight in your last state at bats. Pretty good, huh? After 0 for 20. You did read those stats. I'm proud of you. Oh, I didn't read the stats, I just know those <laughs> things. <laughs> Man, you keep, I just read the paper every day. You keep tabs. <laughs> Man. And you can see Greg Maddox was not going to give up three straight home runs, the three straight batters. He was making sure he kept the ball down to Bobby Bonilla, and he stayed out of the strike zone. The yeah. other pitches were up that they hit out of the ballpark. Mark Grezolanik now. Well, Greg Maddox not only gives up two home runs consecutively, Joe, first time all year, now he walks a guy in four pitches after that. What's happened to him? Well, I really, as I said, I think he was really making sure that he got the ball down. And he's done the same thing here to Grezolanik. He knows that the mistakes he made were up. That's a strike to Grezolanik. One ball, one strike. Well, we've had four home runs already hit here, and we're in the second inning. Maybe this is the new launching pad. Man. Well, the old one across the street, the old Atlanta Fulton County Stadium, they called it the launching pad. And this one seems to carry, the ball seems to carry as well here. That is a base hit. Grezalonic with a single. Very quick infield here. Not perhaps as quick as the artificial turf at Olympic Stadium in Montreal, but he took advantage of the quickness here. And Greg Maddox is going through something that he hadn't gone through for a long time. Well, you know, one of the things that surprised me about the Braves is that they're still able to win here, and Greg Maddox is a ground ball pitcher, and this is a very fast infield. You see two hops, and it's all the way through the infield. This is a fast infield, and he throws a lot of ground balls. But that just tells you how good a pitcher he is. Now Charles Johnson. Out of play down the right field line. Owen won the count. Johnson 
16 homers, 51 batted in, but his average is only 211. And he seemed to have more trouble than some of the others after that big trip of the Marlins and getting himself comfortable in L.A. And that makes a lot of sense, John. He grew up in, you know, Miami. He was a hero there in college, and he was their number one draft choice. He helped them win a World Series. Thought he would always be there. Up the middle, base hit to center field. Bonilla will be held at third as Andrew Jones comes up throwing, and Maddox ends up cutting it off. And that's five consecutive Dodgers who've reached base here to start the second inning. And the, the, the fans in Atlanta are in a state of shock. I'm in a state of shock. Well, I'm sure his teammates are. Leo Mazzoni, he's starting to rock back and forth, Joe. I've never seen that. Well, Charles Johnson goes right back through the middle, and Greg tries to knock it down, but he can't. But Neil got a late start and he was not able to score. Now Carlos Perez to try to help himself out. The infield pulled in at the corners. Double play depth up the middle. Nobody out. Two runs in. Strike corner the inside. Actually considering that Mondesi the final batter of the first inning singled. And then was caught stealing to end the inning. That's six consecutive Dodgers who reached safely against Maddox. I knew that but I was just keeping <laughs> it in my head. Apparently I can read your mind. Yeah, I just yeah, think yeah. something else now. <laughs> okay, I got it. Oh and two the count to Perez. Stick with the game now. Oh. All right, all right. I get you. <laughs> Look, Leo has stopped rocking Joe. Now you know he's concerned. <laughs> now that actually is I was kidding you a moment ago. First time I've seen him not rock. Oh, that, was, that was nasty. Meanwhile, the Yanks and Rangers are going at it. Here's an update with Linda Cohn. MCI takes us to Arlington. The Yanks in town. El Duque was due for a debacle. 3 and 0 in his last four starts. Todd Zeal contributing to a six run first inning for the Texas Rangers. We're on to the second. It's 6 0 Rangers. All right, Linda. Juan Gonzalez, five RBIs last night and another already tonight. Now here's Eric Young. One out and the base is loaded. The middle infield double play depth. Young flight out to right his first time. That will get a run home. Andrew Jones makes the catch. Tagging and scoring is Bonilla also moving up. Grezolanik over to third base. And three runs are in in the second inning. And they are hitting the ball sharply against Greg Maddox. Well, Greg Maddox is usually at his best when he gets a situation where he needs a ground ball for a double play. But this is a high fastball, not your good sinking fastball that he normally throws, and Eric Young hits it hard in the center field. Now watch the location. We talked about his location. This is not good location from Maddox. Now you want a ground ball, you want a sinker. Look at that. That's a high fastball, doesn't sink very much, and Young is able to hit it hard in the center field. But Maddox normally in those situations will get the ground ball, with his sinker and his control is off a little bit tonight. A lot of high pitches from Maddox. Jim Eisen right now, left handed hitter, first and third, two down. Off the outside, 0 and 1. Eisen right, flight out to shallow center his first time. It was 4 0 Atlanta after the first inning. Karras homered right after Sheffield homered to start the inning. And they scored another run since then. Now Maddox is ahead of Eisenreich 0 and 2. I mean I didn't think much of the Dodgers chances in this one Joe. I know you had already given them up John. I, luckily I didn't. <laughs> You'd already given the victory to Greg Maddox. I'm, I'm just lucky that I didn't follow you. I was ready to get on to the next game already. <laughs> yeah. 0 and 2 the count. Oh. Well now Maddox looking more Maddox like. But the Dodgers are right back in it. It's four to three Atlanta and we've only played an inning and a half. We'll be back. Not. Well I guess the question is would you rather see a five to four game or a one to nothing game. Well five to four at this point that seems optimistic Joe. <laughs> Tony Graffinino. No the one thing about pitchers John good pitchers you get them early in the ball game. 
once they get their rhythm, they seem to settle down and pitch better. And I guarantee you Maddox will settle down and pitch better. And the Dodgers hope that Carlos Perez can do the same thing. Well, he's got the last part of the order to start here. Graffinino and then Greg Maddox on deck. One ball, one strike to Graffinino, who is hitting 225 with five homers. The Dodgers, meanwhile, will test your theory on Maddox in the next inning. Mondesi, Sheffield, and Karras coming up. That is twisting foul in amongst the spectators down the right field line. One ball, two strikes. Well, Greg Maddox has given up as many as six runs in a game this year. One time. I was watching that game. Against Colorado. Right. In fact, the Rockies. Castilla was really hurting him in that ball game. Uh, Castilla hurts everybody. Yeah, he hit a ball in the gap with a couple of men on in left center, and he hit a double to right center. He was swinging the bat well that day. See, I, I just keep those things in my mind. I don't need the stats for that. <laughs> And that's a base hit for Graffinino. Carlos Perez. Well, John, I'll tell you one thing. We're seeing some line drives. They're not blooping them in. No. I mean, these are some hard hit balls we're seeing here. I mean, Graffinino rips that ball in the left field. We've seen some really good swings on these against these two pitchers. Well, the Dodgers are not exactly well equipped to go to the bullpen early in this one. Because Dreyford got kicked out after the first inning yesterday, and the bullpen worked seven innings of the game. So, well, he didn't get kicked out. Now he left because of oh, an injury. That's right. Yeah. Galarraga got Galarraga kicked Galarraga out. got kicked out. He left with an abrasion. Yeah. On his uh, elbow. Maddox is already squared around the bunt. I think you were just talking about how you felt that he should have been kicked out. I think that's what you were doing. Oh, you, th you think it was Freudian? Yeah, I think that's what it was. Freudian slip. It was a Galarragian slip. <laughs> Andre said he should be kicked out, that's for sure. And he was the one who wanted to do the kicking. <laughs> There's ball one to Maddox. Greg Maddox has been very effective when he hasn't been bunting. He's got a 258 batting average, one of the best among pitchers in the league. One ball, no strikes. Braves lead four to three in the second inning. It goes to 2 0. Well, that's got to drive you nuts if you're Glenn Hoffman. Here's Maddox trying to give you an out, and Carlos Perez can't throw him a strike. Well, I think Carlos Perez thought he was doing something other than bunting on that pitch. He threw him a changeup. And the easiest pitch to bunt is a changeup, so he felt like he was swinging the bat. Well, these guys, when they swing it, Glavin, Maddox, and Smoltz are pretty effective. Yeah, and it's 3 0. Well, the way. Perez is going. He won't need to swing the bat. He won't need to bunt. He won't need to do anything. Well, a high fastball is the toughest pitch to bunt and get it on the ground. You get a lot of pop-ups off of high fastballs, and that's what you normally do when you have a pitcher up there that you know is bunting. But on the second pitch there, you throw him a changeup. Three and zero. Oh. He's not bunting now. Three and one. And the fact that Maddox and Glavin and the Smoke, they all swing the bat so well, he gives Bobby Cox another option. You know, in a situation like this, if he wants to hit and run, he knows that he's got a pretty good hitter at the plate. He gives him a lot of things that he can do. Ball four. And Perez who has always been distinctive because of his excellent control, continues to to struggle in that regard since coming to the Dodgers. All right, so his Weiss is coming up now. Is he bunting? Uh, what do the stats say? <laughs> Actually, <laughs> I, oh, forget it. All right, I ahead. think he's bunting. You think he's bunting? Yeah. All right. He's, well, got, this... he's got ten sacrifice bunts. There. Well, you this... asked about the stats. Okay. This will be a good test to see how Bobby Cox is thinking tonight. Pickoff play the second. Threw a change at the second. Well, Weiss wisely did not give it away because a lot of times you try a pickoff to see if the pit hitter turns on your first move, and he did not give it away there. 
course, on the other hand, the guy's struggling so badly early on. Why give away an out? I'm, 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 I feel strongly both ways, Joe. <laughs> he wants it. Carlos Perez only plays the first. Eric Young covering. Graffinino moves up to third. Maddox over to second. Excellent butt by Walt Weiss. Well, that tells you a lot about Bobby Cox's thinking tonight. He feels like, you know, they need a couple of extra runs. Good job by Benilla. He stays at third base, but because Carlos Perez is left-handed, that would have been a difficult play for him to go to third. A right-handed pitcher could have made that play right there at third base. But because he's left-handed, he did not have a chance to go to third base because he caught it a little bit off balance. Now Gerald Williams, he grounded into a double play his first time. The middle infield stays back. Change up. It should get a run home. Desilonic looks towards the plate. and throws to first. Scoring is Graffinino. Maddox holds it second. And the Braves manufacture a run here, and it is five to three. Third Jones. Chipper Jones coming up now. Well, Earl Weaver used to say, Joe, play for one run, get one run. And he didn't like to play for one run generally. No. What was his pitching, defense, and a three-run homer? That yeah. was Earl Weaver's theory on offensive baseball. Chipper Jones ripped a single down the left field line. Change up the ball one. I mean, you know, Bobby Cox had him on the ropes here. He had retired only seven. He, he retired only two of the first nine that he faced, but then he gave him an out. Well, he gave him out for a run, is like yeah. you're saying, That's basically. What he did. Yeah. Chance to get another one here with Chipper Jones. Maddox in second. Good fastball to the outside. D high. One ball, one strike. So I'm still vacillating. I'd never be a manager. I still haven't decided what he, what he should have done, Joe. Well, you know what? Bobby made the decision, and he's past that now. He's looking at his next situation that might occur in this ball game. That's what you have to do as a manager, John. You have to make a decision and then just leave it. So whatever decision you made, just leave it. Just go on with the game. That's not if you're managing in the booth, though. You don't have to do that. <laughs> Up here, we can wait and see how it turned out and then decide. Two and one. That's the way I like to manage. Well, you know, I, see, I was non-committal on that because I wasn't really sure. And I didn't want to bet your house again, so <laughs> let you keep your house. Jim Morgan is my landlord. Two and one the count. And the change up misses. Well, after Chipper Jones, the batter is Andres Gadaraka. Here comes Bobby Bonilla. And I think what Bobby's going to tell him is you're going to have to challenge some hitters. You're going to have to throw strikes. You're going to have to go after these guys. Because he's throwing so many change-ups that he doesn't have any, it shows that he doesn't have any confidence in his fastball. And you're not going to be able to just stand out there and throw change-ups the entire ball game. Runner at second. Two down. And he misses on the fastball. So now he has to face the big cat. And that is three walks already. You know what this reminds me of, Joe? It reminds me when when Nomo was with the Dodgers earlier this year and we saw him. Right. I mean, he seemed to be afraid to throw strikes. And he had a good change up, but he was not, he, he didn't make his change up effective by using the fastball. He seemed to be afraid to throw the fastball in the strike zone. And I think in this situation, you're not going to, Galarraga's not going to see many fastballs, although I, I think it'd be a good idea to show him a couple. But he threw him a lot of curveballs the first time up. Galarraga hit a two-run homer in the first. And he strikes him with a fastball at the knee. And that's what he should do. He has to throw him a fastball to establish the changeup just to keep him honest. Beware of cat. And if you're trying to get him out with a changeup, throw another fastball off the plate somewhere so he's looked at two fastballs. Good. Follows the fastball with the curveball. Going to. He's very effective, you know, m working off of the changeup. That's a changeup, I'm sorry, change working up. off of the fastball. But if you do not throw the fastball, changeup is not as effective. Beautiful pitch. And Galarraga is gone on three pitches. 
The Braves get one. We go to the third. Mondesi, Sheffield, and Karras. The three power sluggers coming up. The pitchers have struggled early on. Here comes Mondesi. He's the last guy that Maddox wants to see when Maddox is struggling. Mondesi, eight for 16 lifetime against him. But there is that's Maddox. Greg Maddox. That's a quality pitch that starts off the plate outside, sinks back over the outside corner, and down. Mondesi singled his first time. And he's singled again. And the pitch is up again. Up and out over the plate. Gary Sheffield coming up. We talked about what a bat, what bat speed helps you to be able to do. And Gary Sheffield takes the fastball on the inside corner. Watch, he pulls his arms in just to get to the ball. That tells you that the ball was on him and it got there a little quicker than he anticipated. But because he has such a quick bat, he was still able to generate enough bat speed to hit the ball out of the ballpark. 94 miles an hour on that bat speed. A guy swinging a bat at 90 miles an hour in that particular pitch would have had his bat broken. Gary Sheffield, that was the first pitch he saw from Maddox tonight. Right there on the outside. All in one. One of the things that Sheffield said to me before the ball game, he said, hey, I'm going to swing at the first good pitch. I'm going up there hacking. And it was smart to finger the first pitch his first time up, and it was wise to take that one because that was a perfect pitch. Low and away. There is. Throws to first, and Mondesi just does make it. Nice play by Perez. I mean, that is a great play in that not just to catch the ball, but to have enough presence to go to first base right away. Watch this. No hesitation. He just goes to first base immediately. Look at this. He knows he has the ball, comes up and fires to first base, and Mondesi barely gets back in time. <laughs> great shot there. Clearly back with the awfully close. I mean, when do you see a catcher make a pickoff throw after playing a ball that bounced in like that? One ball, one strike. Two and one. And you see what Maddox is doing. He made a great pitch, the first pitch to Mondesi. He came back and hung a pitch, and Mondesi got a base hit. He makes a great pitch to Sheffield, the first pitch, but he hasn't been able to follow that up. But he's making sure that he keeps the ball down on Sheffield. Mondesi back. Mondesi last year became the first 30 30 man in Dodgers history. 30 steals, 30 homers, but he has only 10 steals this year. He's been thrown out nine times. 2 and 1, Sheffield. The right field line and back out of play. That was an interesting change of thought patterns there for Maddox. They, originally he was going to go inside with a fastball. He stepped off and threw to first base, got another pitch, and went back away. And I think that's wise. I don't think you should pitch Sheffield inside too often. Well, he pitched in there one time that I can re remember that without much success. Two and two to count. Perez goes way out there. Just not quite as sharp now. And it's, it's kind of interesting the way the Braves catchers do. They set up a little quicker outside than a lot of other teams like their catchers to do. But their pitchers want that target out there as quickly as possible. And a lot of times when you move out there, you tell the hitter exactly where the pitch is going to be. So he's already out there. Runner goes, but it's ball four. And that is another walk by Maddox. Meanwhile, more updating from Texas with Linda Cohn. Thanks, John. Rangers did score six in the first off El Duque, but the Yanks got one back in the second off the bat of Jorge Posada against Rick Helling, number 14 for Posada. Helling lost to Hernandez in the Yanks 10 days ago. Yeah, Helling pitched a three-hitter and lost to El Duque, 2-0. The Yanks will host the Anaheim Angels first place in the West against first in the East at 7.30 Eastern. The Expos with Vladimir Guerrero at Dodger Stadium in the second half of the Wednesday night baseball doubleheader. Here is Karras, and he takes ball one. He homered to right field his first time. Well, Karras said he thought, with hindsight, that Maddox set him up in spring training 1993. Said he had lots of homers and doubles. Destroyed Maddox all spring, every time he saw him. Back to the back safely. Here's Mondesi, Graffinino cover. 
And and he says he never touched him ever since. Yeah. <laughs> Until tonight with a home run. Well, you, we're watching Greg Maddox makes adjustments as the game progresses. He was up with a lot of pitches. They've all been hit hard. Now he is making, he's really concentrating on keeping the ball down. And in doing so, he's been missing with a lot of pitches, but he's still better off keeping the ball down and missing than missing up in the strike zone. Eric Karras, been a very dependable RBI man for the Dodgers. No strikes, two men on, nobody out for the pickoff. And again, Mondesi is back in safely. Well, this is definitely not what you're used to seeing with Greg Maddox. Eric Karras, by the way, has driven in more than 100 runs in each of the last three years. And that's a shot. Way back there. This one is on its way. A three run homer. Six to five Dodgers. Maddox hung one up there. And Eric Karras has his second home run of the game. Six to five L.A. A, a stunning turnaround in this ball game in Atlanta. Well, I said he was better off, John, missing down than he is getting balls up in the strike. Now, watch where this pitch is. Up and over the middle of the plate. And you see Maddox really upset. Look at that. Right in his wheelhouse. And Carroll's puts another charge into one. Bobby Bonilla. And uh, you tell you what, Bonilla just missed it. That's right. The same pitch right up in the, in the middle of the plate. And this is like the biggest nightmare for Greg Maddox. He doesn't have the greatest stuff in the world where he can miss in the middle of the plate and get away with it. And Eric Karras is putting it to Maddox just as he did in the spring of 93. And we're back to what we talked about, location, location, location. And his location is off tonight. Now watch the reaction from Maddox. See, this ball just stays right up. Fastball up. Take a look at Maddox. It was after he got Bonilla out. Well, the only thing I want to repeat there is he says I can get the ball lower. <laughs> I don't want to repeat all the other things he said there. For crying out loud. <laughs> Something like that. Well, yeah, maybe. You're better at lip reading than I am. I just saw the lower. <laughs> get the ball lower. Get the ball blanking lower. Yeah. Three more runs after a three-run second, and they have equaled the most runs scored against Maddox in a, in Maddox in a game this year. Colorado had six against him early in the season. Karras' home run, 416 feet, the estimate, and Karras now has 17 homers this year. And four RBIs tonight. Greg Maddox has given up three home runs in this game. He's given up seven the whole year before tonight. Going to the count. Resolano. Six to five LA. Tyler Lasorda now the general manager of the Dodgers, although he has apparently begun the process of interviewing his own successors. He, uh, they were in Florida before they came here. Talking about Dave Dombrowski. Curve ball. He hung it. Base hit. Rezalonic spanks one sharply through the middle. It's one of those situations where you know they're just, they're not missing many pitches. They missed a couple in the first inning, but since that time, every time he's made a mistake, they put it in play hard. Let's take a look at this pitch. Now that, that's not as bad a pitch as it may have appeared. Pretty good hitting there by Grezzolani. Some of the other pitches have been fastballs that are just in the guy's wheelhouse. And that one was breaking away from him. 
But definitely not a Greg Maddox-like curveball. four of the last 14 Dodgers that he's faced. And the Johnny's made a lot of good pitches and the Dodgers wisely have taken the good pitches when he makes a perfect pitch low and away or a good pitch out there they take it and he's been coming back with mistakes and they've been able to hammer. That's back to the back at first. Got a rug on the back with him. Well, we've seen something that has never happened to Maddox at any time in his career tonight. When Sheffield and then Karras homered to start the second inning consecutively. It's the first time that anybody had ever done that to Maddox. Starting from first, Grezelanek, he stumbled, and he just does beat it. The throw back to the bag from Perez. Well, that shows you when things are going right for you there. It works because he was going, and he slipped, and he was still able to get back. Watch, you'll see him take off. Now he slips right there. And he's able to get back. Good job there by Grezelanek to get back to first base. Oh, and two to Johnson. Strike three call. Two down. Well, we mentioned that he's made a lot of good pitches. See, that one moves back over the outside corner. He's made a lot of good pitches, but. He's also made a lot of poor pitches in this ball game. I mean, he's made 54 pitches, and he's not yet through the third inning. 54 pitches for Maddox. That's often six innings worth. Carlos Perez. I mean, Carlos. This has got to be one of the first, the worst two inning stretches he's ever had, and he's ahead. Well, yeah been tied for the least amount of run support in the league among starters. He's been averaging three runs a game by his teammates. That includes when he was with the Expos. And he's gotten six already in this ball game. Two strengths to Carlos Perez. And down he goes. Seven men bat for the Dodgers in the third after eight batted in the second inning. And Eric Karras with the big drill blow. This was a big fly, a three run shot. Six to five Dodgers. Hammering Greg Maddox and leading. Now coming up tomorrow on ESPN, semifinal game two of a best of three, the Phoenix Mercury versus the Cleveland Rockers. Phoenix won the first game, 78 68. Then at 10 p.m., semifinal game two, the Charlotte Sting versus the Houston Comets. Houston is ahead one game tonight on ESPN. Called strike to Andrew Jones. He singled his first time just ahead of Eddie Perez's home run. Carlos Perez coming back throwing some hard stuff here. That may be the first time this entire ballgame Johnny's thrown two straight fastballs. I mean, two in a row. He didn't want to throw them straight. But. Andrew Jones is from Curacao in the Caribbean. Change up misses. One ball, two strikes. And he said that his family friends watching tonight down in uh, Curacao he says that his family said to remind us that it's Andrew Jones not Andrew Andrew change up base hit to right for you well it's good hitting there by Andrew Jones but again it's a change up away and it's in a change up count change up away and he just goes the other way with it but that's good hitting it earlier in his career he didn't do that very well he pulled off a lot of off speed pitches so it shows that he is improving and learning more about how to handle off speed pitches and go the other way with them and the Braves have put their leadoff man on base in each of the first three innings here's Eddie Perez he hit a long home run down the left field line his first time Andrew Jones has excellent speed and has stolen 17 bases this year and been caught only twice I'll tell you what, we're, we're going to look at Andrew Jones tonight. Very young, but enormously talented. And then in the Wednesday night doubleheader, the second game, the Montreal Expos at L.A., that's worth tuning in just to see Vladimir Guerrero. I mean, he's got all the, the talents of Andrew Jones, and right now, he's doing more with it. I mean, he's having an incredible year.
hits a ball. In fact, I can see you driving down to LA for that game, Joe, to see Vladimir. I was thinking about that because I haven't actually seen him play in person. So I was thinking about driving down to watch him on Wednesday. In fact, I think I'll do that. I mean, considering that he is the man. He's the man. In Montreal at a very tender age. Andrew Jones got a lot of help on this ball club. And is not counted upon to, to be the man. Guerrero has just been extraordinary. This foul. And they say Andrew Jones is more advanced defensively than he is a gold lover right now. I mean, that, that quality of an outfielder. But Vladimir Guerrero, while still more of a raw talent in the field, what an incredible arm he's got. I hope, Joe, when you drive down there Wednesday, you get a chance that he gets a chance to I, I do too. show that arm off. One and two the count to Perez. Jones back to the bag at first. Andrew Jones speaks English, Spanish, Dutch, and Papamiento, which is the local uh, Patois language there in uh, Curaçao. I mean, four languages. A very interesting uh, person. There was no baseball played in the schools in Curaçao. There he goes, way outside. Jones with a, uh, Johnson with a throw. Too late. Andrew Jones showing off his speed. That's his 18th steal. And a good play by Charles Johnson, but he stole that base off of Carlos Perez. A left-hander takes longer to deliver the ball to the plate than a right-hander. So if you can read him, you're usually going to get a better jump off a left-hander than you can a right-hander. Two and two to Perez. Now Jones at second. Change up. Back to the screen. And that was really a sensational play by Charles Johnson. Right. Well, Charles is special. Only two more steals needed for Andrew Jones to become the youngest ever for a 2020 year. Cesar Cedeno is a couple of months older than he first did it. Change up. Threw his bat at it and hits it into left field. Carlos Perez threw his arms in the air as if saying, man. What do I have to do? He threw the bat at the ball and singled in the left field. Jones over to third. Well, he was able to do that because it's a changeup, and he can still get the barrel of the bat out in front. Now watch, he's way out in front, and it's a changeup away. I mean, this is, uh... I mean, the, the bat was not in his hands. That's what you call just <laughs> staying alive right there. He was just trying to make contact, trying to foul it off. But he got a base hit. Now, did you ever, ever do that no. in your career? I wasn't real lucky that way, John. I mean, you really, you shouldn't <laughs> give him credit for the hit. The bat, the bat did the hitting. He threw it out there and said, good luck to you, bat. Bautista, and that's ball one. And Carlos Perez threw his hands up in the air as if to say, hey, cabrón. <laughs> Makes a great pitch. The guy throws his bat at it and still gives up a hit. I think that's that's not a good omen if you're Carlos Perez. Daniel Bautista, nobody out, two men, two men on. Let's see back. Out of play, one ball, one strike. Greg Maddox has been rocked. He's given up six runs in the last two innings. He's given up three home, three homers in a game for the first time in his career. Two of them by that man, Eric Karras. Double play ball. There's one, down back to first. Gonna throw a home by Karras for two late. Andrew Jones broke belatedly from third base, but still scored. And it is tied at six. Perez was happy to give up the run in order to get the double play. Now Tony Graffinino comes up. Well that's two double plays that Carlos Perez has induced from Braves hitters. He's still giving up six runs at three innings. Graffinino is out. And Greg Maddox will head back to the mound now. Top of the order. Young Eisenreich and Mondesi. Is Maddox going to find himself? We'll find out. This month, you can experience the power and sheer spectacle of Apocalypse Now. I love this. One away. 
Greg Maddox talked with us. And we asked him about the contrast between his competitiveness and the way he looks. I enjoy winning, I think, more than anything. I think, uh, I don't know if it's so much I like winning as much as I hate losing. I think it's, I don't know which one it is, but it's one of the two, I know that. Uh, you know, professor, so, well, uh, four-eyed geek, you know, all that. You know, it must be a professor. <laughs> He's quite a character, too. In the left field. The idea is that it's the, the spectacled one as the professor. I think is hilarious to Maddox himself. Well, that's, he's on the cover of the fan magazine. You're the genius of Maddox. She's trying to read up, see if there's anything she can find to help Maddox tonight. <laughs> Raul Mondesi, he is twice single and is now nine for 17. It's as though Mondesi has always had Maddox figured out and the rest of his teammates have followed his lead tonight. Although that it's obviously not what's happening here. It'll be Maddox has been throwing hittable pitches. And one thing Maddox has always said is that, you know, he prefers pitching to free swingers, and that's what Mondesi is. He's a free swinger. So it kind of goes against the grain that Mondesi has been so successful. Well, you see, Maddox, as I said, he's adjusting. We had not seen that pitch tonight. That's a slow curveball. We've seen him use a slider a couple of times, whereas normally he use a cut fastball. So he is trying to feel his way through this ball game and find something that works. Sinker to third. Chipper Jones. Greg Maddox looking like Greg Maddox for the first time. An eight pitch inning. Three up and three down. Maddox is coming up when we return. John Miller and Joe Morgan with you. Your Sunday night telecasters from Atlanta. Dodgers six, Braves six, last of the fourth inning. And Greg Maddox is coming up. Maddox with an earned run average coming into this game of 1.65. 163 strikeouts, 29 walks. I mean, pick a category, and his numbers are microscopic. But tonight, he has been hittable, and he has been hit. Chumado. Fortunately for him, Carlos Perez has been just as hittable. And it is 6-6. Six to six. And Maddox, perhaps with an ominous note for the Dodgers, had his first Maddox-like inning. And Joe, incredibly, as the count goes to 3-0, he got his first ground ball out here in this fourth inning, which is what you always think of with Maddox. Ground balls to the infield. He's walked him twice. You know, we asked what is wrong with Greg Maddox. It's very simple. He doesn't have overpowering stuff, so his location is important. Watch where these pitches are. Up and over the plate. Up and over the plate. And up and over the middle of the plate. That's why he has given up six runs. Plus, the base hits were all on high pitches. So he's given up a lot of hits tonight only because of his location, not so much because of his stuff, but his location is not normal. Three home runs for the first time in his career allowed by Maddox. One to Sheffield and two to Karras, as you saw there. Lead off man Walt Weiss bunting, but it's foul. Maddox walking for the second straight time becomes the fourth consecutive Braves leadoff hitter to reach base against Carlos Perez. And Weiss, who bunted with two men on and nobody out in the second. Showing bunt again. I guess if you're Bobby Cox, the strategy is Greg Maddox will eventually Find become himself. Greg Maddox, so let's just get a run and we have a chance. Dodger bullpen he is busy now. Perez continues to struggle. He has walked four. There is Sean Maloney, the rookie. Called the strike. Weiss pulled the bat back, but Eric Greg said it was in there over the outside. All and two the count. The Braves have two home runs. Andres Galarraga and Eddie Perez each hit two run homers in the first inning. The Braves ahead four nothing. But now it is six to six. We're in the last of the four. 
and still gets him at first base. Nice play. He did the proper thing. He charged the ball to try to get the lead runner. But once he fumbled it, he was still able to make the play by barehanded it in the air and making a good throw to first base. Now watch, he charges the ball, trying to get it on the short hop. Gets there a little late, gets it on the in-between hop. But look at him, he stays with it, grabs it barehanded, and an accurate throw to first base. That's a much tougher play than people realize. Look at that. He stays right with the ball, catches it, makes a good throw. Now, Gerald Williams. Fastball too long. Williams has hit into a double play and driven home a run with an infield out. He's 0 for 2. Base hit to bring Maddox home. He's in second with one out in the fourth inning. Perez has illustrated his promise tonight. Walked Maddox twice. It's foul off the right field line. Now the fastball. And Williams is in a one ball, one strike count with Chipper Jones on deck. By the way, a uh, long time, as, as you see, Chipper, the long time Braves official scorer here, Scott McGregor underwent surgery recently. Been a, a fixture here at the ballpark for many years. We want to join all of the people here. At the ballpark and wishing uh, Scott McGregor a speedy recuperation. Tough play for Greselanik and he can't make it. And I don't think it was going to matter. Gerald Williams is very fast. Well, once the ball got over the head of Perez, it was going to be a base hit. Because, I mean, that's just a difficult play. And as you mentioned, Williams very fast down the line. He gets out of the box well, and you see Perez, no chance. Grazalonic charges, and he can't make the play. And Joe, that's interesting how he came in, like you see on turf, and one-handed that with his throwing hand way off, nowhere near the glove. Well, you mentioned this because he played a lot on Astro turf there in Montreal. I mean, had he fielded that one cleanly, he still would have had to reach his hand down into the glove. I mean, on that kind of a play, you like to see the guy with the hand next to the glove to begin with, don't you? Well, you like to see him. I like to see him try to catch it with two hands anyway. Because if you catch it with two hands there, you can throw it from down there. Back to the back, Gerald Williams. Gerald Williams can steal a base. Chipper Jones, the hitter. Again, swinging from his weaker side, the right side. But he's hit well for average as a right-hander this year. You see the difference. Versus left handed pitching when he bats right handed. There's no power. Change it. Strike one. Well, you can see that he does have a good change up, but as I've said all along, you need the fastball to make the change up more effective. You can get guys to chase a few of them, but pretty soon they start to sit on the change up. Like Perez is kind of comes close to balking when he makes that throw. Well, a lot of left-handers do. <laughs> now that is spoken like a base dealer. Yeah. Oh, the lefties—they left all cheat. <laughs> I mean, I thought you're supposed to step toward first if you throw to first. Well, does Andy Pettit step step toward first? One ball, one for hate. You're going to start getting the letters from the Yankee fans now. Well, I, I think that that's been a big complaint in the American League anyway. When he steps forward first night, he has a great pickoff move. And I didn't say he didn't. I asked you did it. Well, what am I, the analyst? <laughs> that's oh. what they pay. That's what we give okay. you the big buck. All right, you're right. He... Third ball, can't handle it. And Maddox will score the go-ahead run. Hit sharply enough that it could have been an inning ending double play. Well, Bonilla has missed a lot of time this year and he was in the outfield for a while. It's very difficult for him, you know, just to come back in and play third base. The ball's hit right there and you see he kind of misjudges it, although the ball takes a high hop and it hits off the heel of his glove. They're scoring it as an error and Maddox comes in to score. 
But it's tough for Bobby Bonilla. I mean, he played the outfield for a long time when he came to L.A., and they moved him back into third for a while because Beltre wasn't hitting well. Then they put him back in the outfield. Now he's back at third base. So very difficult to make that transition on a weekly basis. Charlie Huff, the Dodgers pitching coach, uh, to speak to Carlos Perez, who now has yielded seven runs. Seven to six, the Braves are leading in the... The big cat, Andres Galarraga, coming up. Next Sunday, we're going to check in on the National Home Run Watch. Mark McGuire hit number 53 today in Pittsburgh, and he'll take on Chipper Jones, Andres Galarraga, and the slugging Atlanta Braves. We hope you'll join us that Sunday at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, 5 Pacific, from Bush Stadium in St. Louis on Sunday Night Baseball. Who knows how many he'll have by then? I mean, he had been in some kind of a streak this week. Six homers since last Wednesday. Andres Galarraga has hit a two-run homer and he's been called out on strikes. Perez made a bad mistake against him in the first and paid for it and then dispatched him on three pitches the next time. Williams at second, Chipper Jones at first. Base hit. Williams around third, he'll score. It is eight to six Atlanta. Well, he tries to go inside with a fastball. And Galarraga just rips it to left field for a base hit. You see Charles Johnson set up inside. Fastball gets a lot of the plate, almost the middle of the plate. And Galarraga just rips it. And so. The evening of Carlos Perez has come to an end. We'll be right back. My husband and I made a bet. I said 10, 10, 3, 2, 1 was cheaper. He thought AT&T was. Well, the phone bill is here at Texas. They score three in the third. The big blow by Paul O'Neill. This double will drive in Derek Jeter and Scott Brocious. But there was a big error on this play. The error committed by Luis Alisea on this throw. And O'Neill would end up scoring on it. It's now 6-4 Texas top of the fifth. El Duque still in there. The Yankees doesn't seem to matter what the deficit is. Doesn't seem to matter whether they blow a lead. <laughs> they find a way to win. Here is Sean Maloney. He delivers outside to Andrew Jones. Two men on, one man out. Maloney, huge, six feet, seven inches tall. Twenty-seven years of age. in there base hit another run scores Chipper Jones is in got a rock of the third nine to six Atlanta well there's been a lot of balls hit hard tonight but there now it's in a few bloopers falling in that ball was hit right off the fifth by Andrew Jones and it finds a dead spot down the right field long watch this this fastball tails back in on the hands he jams him and it's a little flare down the right field line and you see Chipper Jones good base running there he could see right away that the ball is going to drop in and he was able to score and Galarraga moved around the third nine to six and in a way you know this goes back to the brawl here yesterday as far as the Dodgers are concerned because you might say as Eddie Perez takes ball one I mean, why did Glenn Hoffman stay with Carlos Perez so long? But he had to pitch seven innings out of his bullpen yesterday. The man he's gone to right here, Sean Maloney, pitched two innings just yesterday here. I mean, he needed some innings from Carlos Perez. He needed probably more than he got. One ball, one strike. So Perez ineffectiveness came at a, one of the worst possible times for the Dodgers. Well, most things have gone wrong for the Dodgers this year. Most people will tell you that, you know, they have more talent on this ball club than their record might indicate. And Tommy Lasorda has been outspoken about that, saying they have a lot more talent than the record, than their record would indicate, but you have to play the game. Back to the bag at first, Andrew Jones. 
saw him steal his 18th base of the year back in the third. Harris on the bag with him. The middle infield double play depth. There is one out. Braves had three home here in the fourth. Suddenly Maddox is looking real strong again. He's ahead nine to six. Sort of have to readjust our thinking about the great Maddox pitched ball game. But that's the one thing about the Braves right now, Joe. They can play this kind of a game with anybody. I mean, they have some sluggers. And they can score a lot of runs. Think of the Braves as a club that wins four to two and three to nothing, a lot of low-scoring ball games, but they can get into this kind of a game and beat you that way too. Not many teams in the National League can slug with the Braves. One ball, one strike to Eddie Perez. It's a ball, two and one. And John, a lot of people have said, you know, the Braves may be able to be taken in the first round of the playoffs. I really don't believe that. I don't care who they play. The Braves, in my opinion, still have an edge because all of their pure pitchers are experienced in postseason play. And some of the other teams, the top teams, are not experienced as far as starting to do the concern in postseason play. The uh, double fake there by Maloney. In the past, the Braves have just been so far. You know, people always say, well, they're automatically going to win. I think the gap has just been closed by San Diego and Houston and, you know, teams like that in their own in, in the National League West, especially. Chad and Johnson are going to talk it over here. Found a little impatient with them. Well, in the National League right now, San Diego today won its 83rd game. The Padres only have to go 17 and 15 the rest of the year to win 100 games. The Braves who have already nearly equaled their full season home run output of a year ago. The Braves coming into this game with 85 wins. It's a foul. So you got an excellent chance that two teams in the league will win 100 games. And there's a third team, Houston, that won today. They're 81 and 50. So if they went 19 and 12 the rest of the way, they win 100 games. That would be something to have three teams over 100 wins and it certainly would spice the playoffs to have three clubs who played that well all in there together. But I still think the Braves would rather not play Houston in the first round. Good change up. Change up for a splitter or something. That one, that one disappeared up there. Two down. The, uh, the Braves as you mentioned Joe have I mean they're just good every year. But they've been getting better. And you see 1998. I mean they've been awfully good at this point. Each of the last three years. But this is the best of all at this point. They won over 100 games last year. 1993 they won 104 games. I think the fans here in Atlanta are jaded to that. <laughs> I don't think they really. Appreciate how good this Atlanta club is year in and year out. Grezelanek to Eric Young in second, forcing Andrew Jones, and that ends the inning. Three more runs for Atlanta. They've scored in every inning. We're going to the fifth inning. Sheffield, Karras, and Bonilla. Karras has got two home runs against Maddox. Nine to six, Atlanta. Nine to six, Atlanta. We go to the fifth inning. And the power is going to be up for the Dodgers again. I mean, they've been up every inning, it seems. Starting in the second, Sheffield, Karras, and Bonilla coming up here. Sheffield hit the first pitch of the second for a home run. In the third, he walked and scored on Karras' second home run. A little bit low on the outside. And Karras, who's homered in both of his at-bats, is on deck. Gary Sheffield. That's a strike. One ball and one strike. Now, Maddox got through the fourth inning with only eight pitches. Retiring the side in order. Finally got his first ground ball out of the game. Two and one. He just doesn't look sharp, Joe. Well, he's just not consistently sharp. He, what he does, he makes great pitches like the first pitch there to Sheffield. He's made a lot of good pitches in this ball game, but he has not been able to back them up, you know, like two good pitches in a row. That's been his problem. Field. And that one is over the 
ahead of Bautista. He plays the Karen beautifully. Sheffield is heading for second. The throw. Two. Wow. Beautifully played by Bautista, but Sheffield just did beat it. And a good job there by first base umpire Larry Vanover to get over to second base and be in great position to make that call. Mark Hirsch back. The second base umpire went out to make sure the ball was not touched by an outfield. That pitch is down, but I mean Sheffield just ripped it. I mean this is a line drive that's just too hard for Bautista to get back there. He makes a fine throw, but Sheffield was hustling all the way and he gets into second base. Watch, you'll see that he slides in safely. The umpire right there on top of the play. Now Karras, he has already homered twice. He takes a fastball to strike. He homered to right field in the second. And he launched a three-run shot to extremely deep left center his last time. I don't think he could believe that pitch. That was another high fastball from Maddox. Oh, and two, that's more Maddox-like getting the pitch over the outside edge. But the first pitch was a high fastball, and Carroll took it. This has equaled his career hit total against Maddox tonight at two at bats. Just off the outside. So Karras really the pitch to hit with the first one in this at bat. Yes. Well, he's jumped on the first high pitch he's seen in every in the other two at bats. But I think he was looking for something else. He just did not feel like Greg was going to make a mistake again. That is a fair ball into the right field corner, and maybe that's the one he was looking for all along. And the ball gets away from the right fielder. Gerald Williams as Sheffield scores. Karras goes all the way to third. It is nine to seven. Atlanta is still leading, but Greg Maddox is still getting clobbered. Well, the pitch was away, but it, it pretty, watch it doesn't sink a lot. Looks like it's just a fastball away. Carroll's is late on it and hits it down the right field line. Now watch, let's see what happens. The ball gets past Gerald Williams. They call it a double and an error. You see him trying to play the carom. That's a pretty tough carom there. Here's Bobby Bonilla. Called a strike on the inside. He has walked and scored a run. It is flight out to center. The infield back. Now Bonilla could get an RBI with a ground ball to the right spot. For the first time, the Braves bullpen is going to get busy. Inside one ball, one strike. Bobby Bonilla, he had off-season surgery on one wrist, and now the other hand is giving him some trouble. And he thinks perhaps he's overcompensating for the wrist that was recuperating. And he got a shot in his wrist a couple of days ago, so he could get back into the lineup. He's got both of them bandaged. One ball and two strikes to Bonilla. Resolanic on deck. Changed up out there. Two balls, two strikes. In the bullpen, Russ Springer, a right-hander, has started to warm up. The outfield around toward left. Against Bonilla. Oh, now that is Greg Maddox. Great movement on that pitch. And it's just hard for a left-hander to handle that pitch because it starts off the plate inside. And you just say, well, it's inside, but the ball moves back. Watch the movement on this pitch. Inside, inside, now all of a sudden it moved back over the inside corner, and Benia knows it, and he just kind of walks away. Mark Grezelani, two for two. Now Chipper Jones moves in at third, so if a ground ball is hit to third base, he will come home. Maddox right on the edge. Strike one. Chipper Jones was talking about Greg Maddox. He faces Greg Maddox every spring in batting practice, early in the spring. He said, you know, when the hitters are still just real behind the pitchers, who've been in camp for a few days already. And he says, as far as he can recall, he's about, about the only regular every year who actually goes in and faces Maddox. Nobody wants to face him <laughs> because he makes him look so bad. 
And he says he's really got the movement going early in the spring. One ball, one strike to Grezelanek. Oh, now that's the Maddox changeup, and it disappeared. Charles Johnson retrieves the bat for him. One ball, two strikes. Well, you can see the grip there for the changeup. It's a circle change, as he calls it. Strikes the count to Grezelani. Well, that'll get the run home. Well, maybe not. And the throw, he is out. Care is thrown out by Graffinino. Well, Graffinino takes a big chance and comes home. When you're playing back, normally you just go ahead and take the out at first base. Carlos breaks right away. Well, a little late because by the time he had started, Graffinino had the ball. And not a good throw by Graffinino, but a good job by Perez to catch, come up with this ball and dive and block the plate. He Watch, he doesn't give Carlos any place to go. Nice play by Perez. Watch him. He gets the ball now. When he just falls in front of the plate, there's no way that Carroll's can get by him without being tagged. So good job there by Perez and Graffinino made a good play. Although we can see the point as to why he probably should have just thrown the ball to first. Right. I mean Eddie Perez made the play with a great pickup and then a great tag, and that was a disaster in the making. And Eddie Perez saved it. And. Uh, on the other hand, Joe, as the runner goes, and he's in there, Grezelonic steals second base. Well, I actually thought it was a good job by Grezelonic to put that ball in play. I thought he had done his job, and Karras was not able to score from third base on the ground ball. And Grezelonic takes off. Perez comes up, knows he has to hurry, throw bounces in front. And Grezelonic is in there safely. Good job by Andrew Jones to back up the play and keep him from going to third on the overthrow. Open activity for the Dodgers. The pitcher spot you up next. We're in the last of the fifth inning. The Braves are leading nine to seven. Grezelonic at second, two down. Strike on the outside to Johnson. And it is two and one. Well, on the other hand, about to Karras, Joe, I personally would like to have seen instead of that straight in slide. I would like to have seen him maybe try to fade away a little bit. Yeah. Well, obviously he was going on contact. Strike on the outside. And that's the kind of uh, call that hitters always complain about. Maddox or Gladwin pitching. Yeah. Charles Johnson was called out his last at bat on a similar pitch and Charles says that pitch is off the plate even though it moved back toward the plate he felt like it still was off the corner two and two three and two and smart as he is Greg Maddox goes right back out there he was trying for the same pitch Mark Guthrie up in the bullpen for the Dodgers so if Johnson reaches here the Dodgers will probably pinch hit for Maloney Took a little something off that one and got it. Maddox has given up seven, but he's leading. Nine to seven Atlanta. Atlanta Braves nine, Dodgers seven. Last of the fifth inning coming up. ESPN Monday Night Countdown. Join Mike Tirico and Sterling Sharp as they take a look at the preseason and final preparations for the regular season kickoff tomorrow night at 7.30 Eastern time. Then it's Monday Night Football. At 8 Eastern at ABC Sports, it's NFL preseason action. Green Bay takes on Denver in a rematch of Super Bowl 32. John Elway leading the defending champion Broncos against Brett Favre and the Packers. Monday Night Football on ABC from Mile High Stadium in Denver tomorrow. Tony Graffinino. 
face Sean Maloney. And uh, Greg Maddox due up next, but Ozzie Guillen has come out of the on deck circle. So, so Maddox has labored through five tortured innings, and I think he is showing some sympathy. But he got his helmet on here, so maybe it depends on whether Graffinino or not. Gets on base. Yeah, Graffinino doesn't get on. Maybe Maddox will hit. Well, if Graffinino gets on, I think he may bunt him over. I think that's why he's. Has his helmet on. So you think he's finished one? Yeah, way I think other. he's All finished. Right. But I think uh, because I, how many pitches does he? 88. 88. Well, maybe not. 88 is not. I, I know Bobby Cox does not let his guys labor. You know, 120, 140 pitches. First from Maddox, I mean, 88 and only five innings. Yeah, I mean, those are 88 tougher Tough pitches pitch. than he usually yeah. throws. Yeah. Tough 88. It's the distress factor. <laughs> Seven runs allowed in five innings. First time that Maddox has given up seven runs in a game in, in more than two years. Oh man, what was that pitch? Two and two the count. See, I learned how you have to talk to a part, Joe. Where was that? Oh, see? It's a question. Too low. And it is three and two. Carlos Perez gave up nine runs tonight, eight earned runs. The eight earned runs allowed by Perez ties his career worst. That is strike three call. Not sure what that pitch was or what he was trying to do with it. I don't think he did what he wanted to do, but it worked. And Oz again is going to hit for Maddox. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please for the Braves. Now that I the pitcher Maddox. Well, here's the pitch. Looks like kind of a, a screwball. And Maddox was going to hit if he's on base. He's going to bunt him over. But now he sees strike three. That means I'm out of the game. But he was going to bunt him over if he would have gotten on base. How's he again? I am foul off the left. How's he again? Was a man without a job. The White Sox cut him loose after last year. You're going with the uh, the rookie. Very promising. Young guy Mike Caruso hitting over 300. The Orioles had him. He had only 18 at bats in Baltimore. They released him. Picked up by Atlanta, and he has been a great pickup for Atlanta. He's hit 274, giving him uh, some excellent shortstop play and some real experience off the bench. Back out of play. One ball, two strikes. We saw Greg Maddox for five innings tonight. And uh, for Maddox, well, that was a rough go. Three home runs for the first time in his career allowed. Consecutive home runs back to back for the first time in his career. Yeah. Bobby Bonilla, and that is out of the field. Well, this game has a way of humbling even the best. You know what I mean? You're going to have some bad days. I don't care how good a pitcher you are or how good a hitter you are. You will have some bad days. <laughs> Gary Sheffield. He's made a few pitchers have some bad days. Tonight, a homer, a walk, and a double. Three runs scored against Greg Maddox. Walt White, eight to strike. Batting left handed now. Greg Maddox. Broke into the big leagues back in 1987. His first full year, he was six and 14. Cubs, a 5.61 ERA. Of course, Maddox uh, never experienced anything quite like that ever since. Another interesting note that they came up with on Maddox since 1991, back before he was in Atlanta Braves. In games where his team has gotten five runs or more in support of him, his record is 78 and two. That was whacked deep in the center, but Mondes. Good work by Sean Maloney, retired five in a row. He's due to lead off. We'll see. Braves lead nine to seven. ESPN Sunday Night Baseball is brought to you by Reebok.
creating possibilities one athlete at a time. The Wagner pitching summary, and it's not pretty. You might, if you have children sitting with you, have them leave the room. Carlos Perez, nine runs in three and a third innings. Greg Maddox, seven runs in five innings. I mean, the Dodgers did something that nobody does to Maddox, and they're trailing. And that is a bad year. Well, we talked about, you know, how interesting we thought this matchup was going to be. Yeah, we had no idea how interesting. Roger Cedeno, pinch hitting for Carlos Perez. Uh, let's see, the Perez is already out of the game. Maloney, pinch hitting for Maloney. And Russ Springer on to do the pitching for Atlanta. Her ball, nice pickup. One away. Well, good job by Springer. He's in good fielding position once he releases the ball. And most of the Braves pitchers are like that because they're not overpowering pitchers. Smoltz is the only one that really drives hard off the mound, so he may be out of not in good fielding position on occasion. But see right there, he stays right there because he's not a hard thrower. Breaking balls and off-speed pitchers will be in good fielding position. Well, connectivity for the Dodgers, meanwhile. Is they'll have to uh, bring somebody else in in the last half of this inning. Eric Young. 0 for 2 with a sacrifice fly standing in. Springer had a pretty impressive year last year with Houston. Caught by Gerald Williams. Two men down here, and let's get an update now from Linda Cohn. John Yanks are clawing back against Texas. Tino Martinez going deep off Rick Helling, number 22 for Tino. Brocious and Posada also have gone deep in this game. Paul O'Neill with a two run double. It's now 7 6, Texas. Thank y'all. Tino Martinez, another 100 RBI year. It's, getting a, it's beginning to be a regular thing with him. And the Yankees are starting to have that mystique about them. It doesn't matter how many runs you are ahead, you can't feel comfortable. You know that they will come back. And when that happens, a lot of teams, when they're ahead, they're playing a little afraid. The batter, Jim Eisenreich, one ball, one strike. Well, last night, Juan Gonzalez hit two homers. Drove in five. The Rangers scored nine runs. David Cohn got clobbered. But the Yankees scored 12 and they beat him 12 to 9. And of course, you know, tonight's starter for Texas, Rick Helling, 15 game winner the last time he faced the Yankees. He pitched a three hitter for eight innings, gave up two runs, and he lost that one 2 nothing. El Duque pitched a two hitter and struck out 13 that day. What are you going to do? They got great pitching and they didn't beat him. Last night they got great offense and didn't beat them. Tonight they got great offense and a huge early lead and they're only ahead by one now. There is Antonio Osuna warming up in the L.A. bullpen. Top of the six. The Braves lead nine to seven. Springer last year with the Houston Astros pitched 55 in the third innings and had 74 strikeouts. This guy throws hard. Big breaking ball. I think a pretty good pickup for the uh, Atlanta Braves. He was with the Arizona Diamondbacks. They sent the young lefty Alan Embry out there to Arizona for him. Springer. Has not pitched all that well for the Braves. A 5.65 ERA since being acquired. Now Raul Mondesin. He is the possible tying run. The high hard one. 0 and 1. Mondesin 2 for 3 in the game. 45,179, the paid attendance at Turner Field here in, in Atlanta tonight. Yeah. Rick Maddox has put so many gems this year and every year. Often the fans have long since gone home in a Greg Maddox pitched ball game with Maddox and the Braves already winning. 
You know, Maddox throws one of those 85 pitch complete game efforts. But not tonight. Five runs, or rather five innings, and seven runs allowed. And things happen to Maddox tonight that have never happened to him in his big league career. And maybe they'll never happen to him. Mondesi could not catch up with the high heat. It'll be Gerald Williams and Chipper Jones and Andres Galarraga, 9 to 7 Atlanta. Sunday night baseball from Atlanta. Next week we'll see the Braves in St. Louis. We pick up with a national home run watch. McGuire hit number 53 today. So we'll see where Big Mac is next week. And uh, two home runs today for Sosa. He's got 51. Well, I think it's down now, John, to just a matter of at bats. I think if Mark McGuire can get over 100 official at bats, where he gets to swing the bat, I think he will break the record. And Sammy Sosa is in the same situation. If they can get some at bats, I think they've put themselves in position that both of them can hit 60 plus home runs. And don't be surprised if he doesn't do too much against the Braves next weekend because the last time the Cardinals faced the Braves, McGuire was 0 for 11 with seven strikeouts. The great Braves pitching staff shut him down. Well, that'll be great for him. I, I Mac is swinging the bat much better now. And uh good confrontations there. That's what you like to see. And as he said, he likes to hit against the best. So I'm sure he's looking forward to the Braves coming to St. Louis. He's played 130 games. As you see, Antonio Osuna now in for the Dodger bullpen a little earlier, I think, than Glenn Hoffman normally likes to use him. But it's tough times right now for the Dodger bullpen after having to throw seven innings out of the bullpen yesterday. So Daniel stays in to play left field and Osuna will hit an Eisenreich's number two spot in the order. High slider fouled away by Gerald Williams, who will be followed by Chipper Jones and then Andres got a rocket. We are in the sixth inning. Sean Maloney went an inning and two thirds, no runs, one hit allowed. Osuna the third, Dodger pitcher. Fastball into right center field, into the alleyway. Mondesi's going to have to chase it all the way back to the wall. Heading for third is Williams. And he will make it standing. A triple. Well, Williams is late on this fastball. It's a high fastball. He actually inside out the ball. But he finds a gap in right center field. Watch, he'll be late on it right there. You can see he doesn't get the bat extended, but he finds a gap in right center field. And by the time Mondes is able to run it back, back, get it back in, Williams is at third with a triple. He can move. Now Chipper Jones, the infield in. Halfway. Jones now from his strong side. This is his power side. He has 28 homers in 360 at bats as a left handed hitter. So better than one every 13 at bats. One home run for a better than every 13 at bats for Chipper Jones as a lefty. He has singled, walked, and been safe in an error in this game. Change up misses. One ball, one strike. Kind of interesting the way the Dodgers are pitching Jones last year with Charles Johnson with in the Marlins with the hard throws they pitched Chipper Jones inside and today with the hard throws they're pitching him away. They don't want to throw him hard stuff. Well, that's a changeup. He threw him a fastball and two changeups. Two and one to Chipper. Brent Huffman, the manager. Charlie Huff, the pitching coach. Nine to seven Atlanta. You see the Midland fielders in halfway. That's ball to the outside. Jones fouled it straight back. Two balls, two strikes. By the way, McGuire with his 53rd homer today. Getting back to that for a moment. 130 games played. So he's got 32 left. Sosa, 51 homers in 130 games. Maris. Back in 1961, had 51 homers through 130 games. Sosa equals for Maris, and McGuire's ahead of him a little bit. So, 
Pittsburgh had two consecutive sellouts this weekend in advance with McGuire coming in. That's the first time since they moved into Three River Stadium that they sold out two consecutive games like that. Here are the numbers we're telling you about. Maris, McGuire's a couple of home runs ahead of him. Right through the middle. Base hit. It is 10 to 7 Atlanta. Uh, Chipper Jones has done this the entire season. I mean, he's just a good RBI man. He goes down and gets this pitch and lines it right back through the middle for a base hit. He's really been swinging the bat well tonight. Another changeup out away from him. Watch, it's a changeup away. Look at he goes out there and just hammers it back through the middle. He didn't try to pull it. That's just good hitting. Tommy Lasorda, he's had more fun than he's having tonight. Or that he had yesterday afternoon. Or that he's had on many days since he became the GM. Dodgers are not doing well. They are 7 and 13 this month. Andre's got a lot. It's ball one. Of course, uh, Tommy had basically guaranteed the Dodgers with their new lineup and new talent that they were going to win the wild card race. Well, he thought he had a favorable schedule in his favor at that time. They were playing well. They were on the road, and they were going home after that to face the same teams that they played well against on the road, and he thought they were going to make up some ground, but it did not happen that way. Well, they were in Montreal for three games right after they had made the trade with the Expos. Then they were going to go home to face Pittsburgh for three and Florida for three. A nine-game stretch that seemed real favorable for them. Good slider. One and two to Galarraga. But in those nine games where they were supposed to turn the schedule around, it turned around on top of them. They went three and six in those nine games. It was Eric Karras, Eric Young, and Sheffield, and a lot of them have been saying this week, say, hey, we can't even talk about the wild card race. We got to talk about just trying to win a game here. Two and two. They definitely have talent on this ball club. They just have not been able to put things together. I mean, look, as we look at them now, I mean, Mondesi, one of the outstanding young talents in the game. Sheffield, just a, one of the most fearsome sluggers. Karras, great RBI man. I mean, look what they did to Maddox tonight. Nobody's done that to Maddox. Charles Johnson, one of the outstanding catchers in the game. Eric Young, did a great job as their leadoff man, 36 steals. But the wins have not been there. And this club, which has been labeled as a, a, an underachieving club the last two, three years, this year it's been worse than that. The runner was going on the play, and Chipper Jones steals second as Galarraga strikes out on the slider. One away, Chipper Jones with his 13th steal. Um, Galarraga has proven that he can hit the fastball in. That's a breaking ball. Johnson couldn't handle it. And he becomes a strikeout victim for the first out here in the sixth inning. Andrew Jones now three for three with an RBI, two runs scored. And a steal. Andrew played uh, soccer and basketball mostly in school in Curacao. And slider is belted high and deep into left center. Mondesi at the edge of the warning track, tagging Chipper Jones, makes it the third. Andrew. Just got under that one a little bit. Well, it's a hanging breaking ball from Osuna. It hangs right in the middle of the plate. You see Charles Johnson was set up outside. That pitch came right in the middle of the plate. Good job by Chipper Jones as he goes back to tag up. Mondesi wasn't ready for it. Surprised Mondesi, and Jones gets over to third base easily. I think Mondesi thought that was the third out. Well, he didn't think he was going for sure. Two down, Jones at third. Here's Eddie Perez. And that's not supposed to happen to Montesi with this great arm. 
10 to 7 Atlanta. Eddie Perez, a two run first inning homer. Singled in the third, struck out in the fourth. Also made a great defensive play in the fifth inning to cost the Dodgers a run. Might have been one of the biggest plays of the game. For well, it was because it could have opened the gates for the Dodgers to score some runs. Because Graffinino made the throw to the plate, which he probably should not have. He should have gone to first base for the second out of the inning. Eddie Perez from Maracaibo, Venezuela, which he says is the hottest place on earth. <laughs> so when they play ball there, they play at 11 o'clock in the morning because it's so hot. And he said, even then, the ground burns. That's how hot it is. Two and one the count. Too high. Three when you can get an idea there. 94 miles an hour. Osuna's got a great arm. One of the things that we just kind of take for granted, John, is Charles Johnson's work behind the plate because the slider and the dirt two pitches ago, I mean, he makes all those things, you know, look so easy that you don't. You're not worried about him bouncing a pitch in this situation. It's a good fastball. Perez just got a piece of it. Three and two the count. A lot of pitchers are afraid to throw that slider down low with a runner at third base for fear that they may bounce it and it gets away from the catcher. But I've noticed that everyone who pitches to Charles Johnson, they do not have that fear. They just try to make their best pitch, and he usually keeps it in front of him. Three and two. Wow. Foul ball. That's one of those fastballs that they come that chases you. <laughs> Fastball started out over the plate, just ran in. Watch. Starts out over the plate and it just chases him and just runs in on him. And he doesn't know where it is. He's just glad that it was a foul ball. Still three and two. Chipper Jones at third. Knocked in a run here. Side. So Perez is on base for the third time in the game. And now the batter will be Daniel Bautista. Bautista is 0 for 3 in this game. That's a bad night when your club scored 10 runs by the sixth inning and you're 0 for 3. And your club has 12 base hits. Bautista earlier this week. And a big two run double on behalf of Maddox against the Giants when they were here. Maddox was not as sharp as you ordinarily see him when he faced the Giants last Tuesday. But the Braves kind of made up for it. They went out and got eight runs for him. Tonight he was at one of his worst starts ever. And the Braves have 10 runs on the board for him. And they owe him. I think they should get 13 or 14 tonight, Joe. All he's done for them. I mean, how many times has he won one nothing, two to one, given them wins when he when they have not done anything? So they owe him one of these. Charlie Huff after have to, have to talk to Osuna. With a two ball no strike count to Daniel Bautista. Now, as they talk here, Joe, I just wanted to, to mention this. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Office of the Commissioner of Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated no, without express written consent. Any thoughts that you have, Joe, now? Okay, well, since you had a moment there, I wanted to say. Eddie Popowski, the longtime Boston coach, he had a birthday this week, and his family wanted me to wish him a happy Come birthday. Come on, Danny. Eddie Popowski. Yeah. Seems like he's been around forever. In the Boston Red Sox organization. He's the third base coach in that uh, 67 season. That's a base hit down the right field line. Chipper Jones has scored. Eddie Perez to third and holding. It's a stand-up double for Bautista, and he has now joined the hit parade. It is 11-7. Atlanta and it doesn't matter who Hoffman brings in there tonight they're all getting roughed up well Osuna 
Throws a fastball. It's supposed to be away. It moves back over the middle of the plate. And Bautista flips it down the right field line for a base hit. Jeffrey Jones scores his third run of the ball game. And the Braves have 11. 11 to 7, and we're in the sixth inning. Runners at second and third, two down. Raffinino handed his 0 1. A Springer, the pitcher, would be due up next, but the Braves' bullpen is busy. And Michael Tucker is out of the on deck circle. Just in case. Hung a slider there, but Raffinino fouls it off to the right. Well, this is not the Osuna we're used to seeing, and this guy's got outstanding stuff. But he is not sharp at all. He was the guy who was very disappointed. It is, it is El Presidente, Dennis Martinez, who was up in the Atlanta bullpen. Osuna thought he should be the closer. And then was very disappointed when they acquired Jeff Shaw from Cincinnati. And that's the pitch he's been trying to make all through the inning. The inning is over. Two more runs for Atlanta. They lead 11 to 7. Sheffield and then the two homer man, Eric Karras and Tommy Bonilla, coming up. Atlanta leading the Dodgers. Here we go to the seventh inning. Gary Sheffield, Eric Karras, and Bobby Bonilla. And these guys have really produced tonight big time. Well, they've been hot tonight, and Gary Sheffield, especially, and Carroll, they've really swung the bats well. And the important thing is that they took advantage of the mistakes that Greg Maddox made early in this ball game. Eric Harris, two homers, a double, and five runs battered in. All of that against Greg Maddox. I mean, has anybody ever had a game like that against Maddox? That's a question for which I don't have an answer. Gary Sheffield against Russ Springer. High and tight for ball one. Sheffield had a homer. A walk and a double against Maddox, and three runs scored against Greg. And it seemed like he was always getting driven in by the man behind him, Eric Karras. It's back to the screen, man. A big rip at that one. One ball, one strike. Anytime you go inside on Gary Sheffield, you're asking for trouble unless you set him up with a couple of sliders away and you get two strikes on him because inside he is very, very quick. I don't think there's anyone quicker inside than. He is in the entire game of baseball. In the air to shallow right. Andrew Jones. Or rather, uh, Gerald Williams, I beg your pardon. Let's take a look at Eric Carroll's early in the ball game. We're going to look at his bat track, his speed. And that's an 84 mile an hour slider from Maddox, and he swings the bat at 84 miles an hour and hits a home run. 89 mile an hour fastball from Maddox, and he swings the bat at 87. And that's the adjustments that you make on Greg Maddox. But he got the pitches up, and Karras was able to handle it. Just missing outside. Well, Karras, career record for RBIs in the game is six. He's one shy of that. Although, considering that he got the five against Maddox. May well consider himself uh, two or three days ahead of the game here. I mean, he was two for 27 lifetime <laughs> against Maddox coming into this game. The soaring pop up. Wow. And it hits the top of the dugout. Yeah, see, but you or Eric Karras, you say, well, I was two for my last seven against Maddox going into the game, so now I know I can hit him because he had gone over 20. His first 20 at bats against Maddox. So he said, Now I've got him. I've got him figured out now. And he had a good night, but it wasn't the Greg Maddox that we know he faced tonight. I mean, he wasn't looking at it that way. I talked to him before the game. All he said was, he said he had that big spring training against him, and he's sure Maddox was setting him up ever since because he let him hit him in that spring. He says, I've only had a couple of hits against him ever since. Maybe the two for 27 was Karras setting Maddox up for tonight. He struggled against her for the last five years <laughs> and then picked his spot on Sunday Night Baseball to erupt. Javi Lopez. I 
I have no idea what they're looking at, Joe. Do you? <laughs> Help me here. Whacked into left field by Karras. He's hitting everything hard tonight. Right to Bautista. Two down. Now an update from Linda Cohn. John, the Rangers have their six-run lead back against the Yankees. The big hit, Rusty Greer, a three-run home run. It came off of Ryan Bradley, the kid the Yankees just brought up. Welcome to the majors, Bradley. It's 12-6. And that Rusty Greer, he is quite a hitter, quite a player. Two down, Bobby Bonilla. Ball one. I remember last year when we had the first interleague play, the National League players who saw Rusty Greer for the first time kept saying, who is this guy? Man, he is good. And they didn't know anything about it. Well, he had, he's still overshadowed to a certain extent by Yvonne Rodriguez and Juan Gonzalez and Will Clark and all the players there. But he has been a very consistent player for the Texas Rangers. Bobby Bonilla has walked and scored a run. He's flied out and struck out. Facing Russ Springer, two down, nobody on. 11 to 7 Atlanta is leading. Well, we mentioned about McGuire hitting his 53rd today. Sosa hitting numbers 50 and 51. Incredible years. However, neither one hit a home run today in a win. The two teams both lost. In fact, the Cubs got annihilated. Houston defeated them 13 to 3 at Wrigley Field. Bonilla gets the walk. A two out walk for Bobby Bow here in the seventh inning. That will bring up Mark Resolanic. We'll see Mark McGuire next week. The St. Louis Cardinals taking on Chipper Jones, Andres Galarraga, and the Atlanta Braves, 8 Eastern, 7 Central, and 5 Pacific. We hope that you will join us then. Just before we hit September. And Chris Maris at 51 going into September. In his record setting year, Leo Mazzoni on the phone to the bullpen. Ball one, too high to Grezzolani. John, I might mention, you know, one of the things that kind of disturbs me is this talk of, with, about McGuire, you know, the supplements that he's supposedly taking. You know, the, the problem I have is this illegal substance that's sold over the counter into the conversation. I mean, aspirin help you feel better as well, and it's sold over the counter if it's illegal. Substance, why is there a question about what he's doing? I don't understand that. But I guess we're looking for all angles. You know, in this day and age, we look for every angle we can find. Mark McGuire starting to get a taste of what Roger Maris went through back in 1961. And I think somebody in New York put it best this week. Now that he hit 50. He hadn't seen anything yet in terms of the kind of exposure and the kind of interest generated in fans and the media in all things McGuire, not just McGuire the player, but everything about McGuire. That's a curveball of beauty. Strike three call. 11 to 7 Atlanta. We go to the last of the seven. A good deal on a great tire. Braves 11, Dodgers 7. As we go to the last of the seventh inning, there was another big home run hit today in baseball, and neither McGuire nor Sosa was involved. Here's Linda Cohn. Thanks, John. Yeah, McGuire is 53, Sosa 51, but Barry Bonds, he's got 400, baby. 400 home runs, 400 stolen bases. The first player in Major League history to accomplish that feat. It came in a 10-5 win over Florida. Congratulations to Barry Bonds. And John, that's quite an accomplishment for a guy to have power and speed. I mean, that's the name of the game. I mean, and very few people have ever had that combination. And I mean, that's just fantastic. Well, he hit his 300th homer against the Florida Marlins just a couple of years ago in San Francisco and became one of the fourth men to be 300-300. The others being Willie Mays, his dad, Bobby Bonds, and Andre Dawson, who was there that day as a member of the Marlins. And now, a couple of years later, he 
was deep against the Marlins again. Kurt Ojala, 400-400. And he may end up 500-500. And he's got that type of ability. Bonds, uh, as we see Michael Tucker pinch hitting against Antonio Osuna, batting for the pitcher. Walt Weiss and Gerald Williams scheduled to follow. 11 to 7, Atlanta is leading. I think that 400 400 is apropos for Bonds because he's got the combination of talents. He's not just a slugger, but he is a great slugger. He's not just a base dealer, although he. He's an outstanding base dealer. And there's very little Barry Bonds can't do in a ball game. On the changeup, Tucker lunging for it, but he fouled it back out of play. Two balls, two strikes. It's quite a day in baseball. I mean, McGuire and Sosa, big days. There's Dennis Martinez. It looks like he will be the man to come on for the eighth inning. He was honored in pregame ceremonies. It's uh, 244 lifetime victories. Two balls, two strikes. Tucker hanging tough here against Osuna, the third Dodger pitcher. And John, a couple of years ago, people were speculating that today's players would not stay around long enough to, you know, reach some of those hallowed milestones like 500 home runs, 3,000 hits. And I see say that, but yeah, but now look, next year, John, Tony Gwynn, Wade Boggs, and Cal Ripken Jr. can all get their 3,000 hits. And never has that happened before where three players got 3,000 in the same year. So I disagree. I think the players today are, are going to stick around and set records and equal records and hit 500 home runs, get 3,000 hits. I think it's, uh, and I think it, I think they are, it just shows the ability that the players today have. Well, look how long Nolan Ryan stayed around. Well, the players keep themselves in great shape. They work out in the offseason, and I mean, they keep themselves in much better shape. So their longevity is much longer than players 15 or 20 years ago. Down on strikes goes Michael Tucker. Dennis Martinez, 43 years of age, 244 wins. One more than Juan Marichal picked up in his illustrious career. Roger Clemens, 228 career victories. And Roger is on a roll right now. He's won 10 in a row. Greg Maddox has won 15 or more in 11 consecutive seasons. One of the, the great records of continual success in baseball history. Walt Weiss takes a strike. Andres Galarraga, we were looking at him in the dugout a little while ago. He's having one of his best years ever. He's 37 years old. So maybe it wasn't Coors Field, right? Tribute to all those home runs and RBI. It's the launching pad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, the big cat. One of those guys who he sort of had two careers. You know, he started out great with Montreal. He uh, had a low. A low. Yeah. Yeah. And then it was kind of Don Baylor seemed to, to meld with him as, a, as an instructor in St. Louis. When Baylor became the manager of the expansion Rockies, he recommended that they sign the free agent Galarraga. And he followed his guru. And Baylor, I think, was very upset and maybe even hurt that Galarraga left the Rockies after last year. He had a chance to. Uh, Forever remembered as the greatest of all the Rockies, and he felt also, I think, hurt that he'd had a hand in helping Galarraga turn his career around, and that didn't seem to be worth anything. Just he was worth a lot. Yeah, <laughs> to Galarraga. Huh? Yeah, 24 million. <laughs> and that's a ball. Three and two, the count. But hey, Joe, there's no crying in baseball. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's our core audience right oh, there. Okay. <laughs> this guy watches Sunday Night Baseball every Sunday. Weiss gets the walk with one out. Gerald Williams coming up. Well, in the past, you know, left-handed starters have always been a problem 
for the Braves, and that was because they've Chipper Jones hits better from the left side in the past. You had Ryan Klesko, and you had McGriff. And now with Galarraga in the middle, they have changed this club around. I mean, the power in the lineup was always left-handed. Now they've added a right-handed bat to this lineup, and that's the reason you see that they're 20 and 6 this year against left-handed starters. Gerald Williams now. Ooh, a high heart one. A lot of John, a lot of people have felt that you know the Braves are you know, not as good as they were in the past, and you know they may have problems in the postseason. I don't see that. I really do not. I think I think the Braves are still the team to beat in the National League. Gerald Williams has an infield single. He's had a triple. He's had two runs batted in. Two runs scored. I think that Joe against lefties in the postseason, he could be a real key for the Braves. Good. <laughs> Glad you were listening. Yeah. <laughs> just kind of recapping what Joe was saying early in the ball game for those of you who perhaps just tuned in. Because if they do face someone like Randy Johnson, you'd rather have Gerald Wolf Williams in there maybe than Michael Tucker you know, in that situation or even Ryan Klesko. One of them may be taken out. But I'm sure that Bobby Cox is kind of getting a game plan together. If you face uh, the Astros, you've got not only Randy Johnson, you've got Mike Hampton. One ball and two strikes. The Mets have Al Leiter. Real tough left. That is foul on the third base side. One ball and two strikes. Chipper Jones is on deck. Braves are leading 11 to 7 in the last of the seven. Chipper's had another fine night. A couple of hits. Than they know what to do with. They waved a guy out of the minor leagues, Paul Bird. Philadelphia picked him up, and he's had two complete game victories in a row for the Phillies. Bonilla ended up not making a play anywhere. Instead of just going to first, he wanted to go to second, and it was too late there. Well, again, it's because he hasn't played there very often lately. Let's take a look at Chipper Jones and his at bats today. Let's look at him left handed. We know how sweet a swing he has from the left side and the power he has. That's an 89 mile an hour swing, but he hits for a lot of power from the left side. And here's his right handed swing today. And I think it's because this pitch is low. He really attacks the ball right there and he ends up with 90 miles an hour, which is quicker. Wow. Yeah, which surprises you because he doesn't hit for nearly as much power from the right side. It's a shot in the first inning right down the left field line. I mean, he really hit it hard. Jim Eisenreich. The great play kept him from going for a double. I think Chipper himself would be surprised to hear that. Yeah. Well, when I talked to him today, as you did, he said he, you know, he was a natural right-handed hitter and he should be better from that side. High in the air off the left field line, but that will drop back into the customers down there. 0 and 2 the count. But he just does not get enough at bats, you know, from the right-handed side to. The right side to be effective as he would is from the left side. He said now he feels like left handed is his natural side now. He said batting right handed. He just has to struggle and work so hard for whatever he gets. This seems to come so much more easily for the left. That was a close pitch. One ball and two strikes to count. We're in the last of the seventh. One out. Antonio Osuna, the third Dodger pitcher. He'd been laboring. He gave up two runs in the sixth, his first inning. Andres Galarraga is on deck. He's hit his 40th home run tonight. And the changeup misses. Two balls, two strikes. Osuna has thrown 51 pitches, Joe. In an inning and a third. Now that, I mean, he doesn't throw that many pitches in a game. El Cañon. But he is uh, struggling tonight. That is the Cañon fastball for strike three call. Two down and Galarraga coming up. 
Well, they come back inside after going out over the plate a lot. You see that ball does move back over the inside part of the plate. Good pitch there from Osuna. Andres Galarraga in his first year with his new team has hit 40 home runs. Did you know that that has happened only four other times in Major League history? I'll act like I don't, but I read the same stats. <laughs> I wasn't asking you. Oh, okay. You know, I'm asking our, our, Audience. our fans okay. out there. Right. Yeah. And three of those five times now, he's the fifth guy to do it. Right. The guy has hit his 40 home runs for the Braves in his first year with the club. It's a ball outside. One ball, one strike. Davey Johnson came to Atlanta in 1973 and hit 43 home runs. He's a second baseman. All right. Up to you, they had three guys hit over 40. Aaron and Darrell Evans also hit 40. Jeff Burrows in 77 hit 41 his first year with Atlanta. Jason Ed Smider. One ball, two strikes. Andre Dawson, his first year as a Cub, hit 49. And Barry Bonds, his first year with the Giants, hit 46. And got around the fifth in history to do that. Paul Weiss at second. Gerald Williams at first. Two down. Slider off the outside. A moment ago, we had a shot of uh, Darren Dreyford looking on. Hit Galarraga yesterday. Precipitating the brawl. Galarraga was ejected after charging the mound. So in his first at bat afterward, that was tonight. And he launched a two run homer. John Miller with Joe Morgan from Atlanta. The Braves 11, the Dodgers 7. A wild free for all here. And a Greg Maddox started game. Now Dennis Martinez comes on to pitch for the Braves. The veteran right hander, the third Atlanta pitcher of the game. And we've and a little extra time here, so let's go to Linda Cohn. Thank you, John. The home run chase heating up big time. We'll begin with slamming Sammy Sosa, hitting number 50 and 51. He told himself to slow down and be patient, and he hit two out in a loss to the Astros. Meanwhile, Mark McGuire, number 53. This coming off Ricardo Rincon of the Pirates, is sixth homer in five days. He's eight short of tying Maris, but he's taking tomorrow off against the Pirates. And uh, that certainly is nothing new, although McGuire has taken fewer days off this year than in any year for, for many, many years. To see all of those highlights, McGuire and Sosa chasing the, the elusive home run record. Barry Bonds, the 400-400 man, all the big highlights of baseball today. And a conversation with David Cohn, the Denver Broncos training camp report. Sports Center with Kenny Mayne and Dan Patrick following the ball game. Charles Johnson comes up now against Dennis Martinez. I think Dennis was very touched before the game. They had the ambassador of Nicaragua to the United States who was part of these ceremonies before the game and a videotape tribute from Juan Marichal himself from the Dominican Republic. And uh, Joe I think uh, you know, a good question is, well, why make a fuss about a guy who's from Nicaragua? I mean, he's he's a big leaguer, just like all the other big leaguers. Right. But on the other hand, I guess it certainly is a big deal in Nicaragua, where Dennis Martinez has become a, a national hero. And uh, they certainly they certainly make a big deal of it down there. The right field along the line. And deep by Jackson, but planted and caught by Gerald Williams. One away. Roger Sedano coming up now. Here's the game cast. In game box score at ESPN.com on the internet. Check it out. Mondesi, Sheffield, Karras, all with big nights for LA. Karras with five RBIs. Sheffield at a home run. They had three home runs against Greg Maddox the first time ever that he has allowed three. And they hit consecutive home runs in the second inning. Sheffield went deep. The next batter, Karras, boom, he went deep. First time that's ever happened to Maddox. And that's when Maddox, Greg had a four to nothing lead to start that inning. 
Jorge Sedeno now. Well, Maddox just when hitters in San Diego and Houston and Chicago or the Mets or something, you know, teams who might face him in the postseason might be taking heart by, well, look at that. He is human after all. <laughs> I have a feeling, though, Joe, the next time out, those same pitch that look so fat will be dipping and darting again and they'll be swinging at balls that aren't there. Well, I think this is obviously an aberration of the season for him. This is a one game aberration. He'll be all right. JT Snow, after he struck out a couple of times against Maddox last Tuesday, made a comment that I thought summed up Maddox very well. He said, The ball is there, you swing at it, and then it's not there. And that's the way it works with Maddox generally. But tonight, he just couldn't make the ball go to the places that he wanted to make it go. Curveball right through the legs of Dennis Martinez. Hello. So Roger Cedeno is aboard with a single, and now to the top of the order we go. Well, a good job by Cedeno with two strikes. He just takes a breaking ball back up the middle. Martinez has been known for his curveball throughout his career. He's always had that overhand curveball that goes straight down and right between the wickets. Eric Young now. He is 0 for 3 with a sacrifice fly. And that's ball one. Mentioning that Mark McGuire had his 53rd today, Joe, he becomes the third National Leaguer in the history of the National League to reach 53 home runs. The only others, Hack Wilson, with the Cubs in 1930, had 56, and Ralph Kiner in 54 in 1949. Cy Young candidates this year in the National League. And of course, the, the Braves have a couple. San Diego's got a couple of starters and Trevor Hoffman. Throw to first, back to the back is Sedanio. Who are you favoring in that race right now? Talking to the audience again? No. <laughs> <laughs> Joe. <laughs> they get uh, Sedano at second base. Walt Weiss. Throw over there. Oh, the Sedano may went into a slide and seemed like he almost stopped before he got the second there. Two down. Hey, you know, you're often one of those. Uh, Home run referees, weren't you? Yes, I was. You started to, you started daydreaming about some of the biggest ones you ever hit. Not me. I was thinking about, <laughs> hey, I watched McGuire and Sosa and these guys hit all these home runs, and they're just a thing of beauty. We had a triple in this ball game, and I was really trying. You know, a lot of people say the triple is the most exciting play in the game, and then I was trying to compare that. I was watching Gerald Williams run for a triple, and then I saw McGuire hit a home run. Yeah. I think the home run was more exciting, John, personally. Yeah. Well, yeah. sometimes, I mean, not all home runs are equal. Right. Yeah, that's the point. I mean, as, as Shakespeare, you know, to sort Ooh. of paraphrase, oh. uh, it's not what it is, but what it seems to be. Ooh. Right? Yes, yes. You agree with the bard on that one? <laughs> Shadow left. And it's dropped! Stand there, stand there. Safely into third is Eric Young. Bautista dropped that. And Luke ends up at second base. Well, you know what I like about that? I mean, not that he dropped it, but everyone was hustling. Eric Young, you know, got around the third base, and Luke gets into second base. There you see Bautista drop the ball, but when he comes up, everyone has been running, everyone is hustling, and there's Eric Young going into third base. And Luke goes in the second. I think Bautista was sitting there thinking about McGuire and Sosa. And wondering what's more exciting, the triple or the home run? <laughs> and then they hit one to him, Joe, just at that very moment. Raul Mondesi. Well, the Dodgers are given a great gift here against Dennis Martinez. Mondesi 
with 28 home runs stands in and instead of the inning being over Mondesi has a chance to make it a one run game. That's a ball and that's that's pretty good uh, velocity there 89 miles an hour for a grandfather. John maybe Bautista was listening to your Shakespeare explanation. <laughs> it's not what it is it's what it seems to be. Ooh. One ball one strike. I mean you know Eddie Perez hits a home run. That's great. That's nice. Yeah. Mark McGuire goes deep. That's one to remember. I'll give you ten grand for it if you catch it in the bleachers. <laughs> right. One ball one strike to count. To Mondesi. I'd like to send out a challenge right now to whoever catches McGuire's historic home. I mean I think number 60 will be historic. Yes. You, you equal the babe that's history. Yes. 61 obviously that will be historic. Yes. 62. Yes. Never been done. 63. So well I'm, don't get ahead of me. Oh, OK. And everybody's talking about you know how they're going to catch that ball that historic home run and get rich on it right. Oh. There's a uh, Sammy Sosa fan. <laughs> Cubs lost. Sosa hit two. She's calling it a ninth. And that is caught at second base by Tony Graffinino. And Daniel Bautista was never so happy to see a ball go right at somebody as he was there. Last of the eight coming up Sunday night baseball from Atlanta. It's uh, Greg Maddox's game to win. Scott Radinsky in from the L.A. bullpen now. Veteran left-handed. He's the fourth Dodger pitcher of the game. Maddox had one of his worst games tonight. Five innings, seven runs allowed. But Carlos Perez was even worse. Worse still. Even poorer. <laughs> he was worser. <laughs> Wait a minute. The guy is quoting Shakespeare <laughs> a minute ago, and now you're coming back. <laughs> Andrew Jones stands in, and Andrew swings and doesn't get it. It's 0 1. Andrew has three hits, all singles, and he's flying out deep to left center field. Scored two, driven home one. 11 to 7, Atlanta is leading. This is Maddox's game to win, even though he went only five innings. And that's a ball. But here's my challenge, Joe. Okay. The person who catches each of those historic home runs, right, from McGuire or so, so who, whoever hits it, like ball is deep down the left field line. That ball is gone. Number 21 for Andrew Jones. 12 to seven, Atlanta. Well, maybe all the guys who want to catch that home run ball should come here to Atlanta and get their practice. <laughs> I mean, the Braves are just an awesome ball club right now. That's number 174 for Atlanta. Well, it's a fastball in, and he does not get it in. At least Andrew Jones does not let it get in, and he rips it down the left field line for a home run. That's a nice view of. Well, they didn't catch it, John. Now, yeah. get back to the 60 home run. Okay, game. it was just, uh, you know, the other night he hit number 50 right. in New York, and there was a, a memorabilia dealer right on site who offered the guy who caught the ball $10,000 cash right there. Right. And what I'm saying is, is, hey, let's enjoy the game. Let's enjoy the excitement. And how about going in and, first of all, offering it to Mark McGuire with Sammy Sosa and a wild throw by Bonilla and Eddie Perez is on well we've seen a lot of things we don't see that often here tonight well like I said it's just difficult for a guy well that ball came back on him he picked it up and he's usually one thing he does normally do well is throw well but he's got both his wrists are bothering him and I mean usually throws the ball accurately and well I just think that you know it's just tough for a guy to play the outfield and then come back to the infield and go back and forth it's, it's just a difficult chore. Second Dodger error and here is Daniel Bautista. Bautista double home run his last time. Catch that ball you catch number 60 62 whatever. Yeah. 
go in and say you want to meet McGuire and offer it back to Mark McGuire or Sammy Sosa, whoever. Maybe they give you a bat, sign a bat for you. Maybe the team will give you a season ticket. I don't know. I'm glad this is a double play. That's a double play. Yeah. yeah. But in other words, it was his moment. Get the ball back to him. He's the one who hit number 62. Okay. Show some class. That's what I'm saying. Am I? I'm not gonna. I can't agree with that, but I'm listening. I mean, in a, in a dream world, I think that is a possibility. But if a guy is standing there, going to give you ten thousand for number fifty, I think there are going to be people there with bigger checks for number sixty. Graffin, you know the hitter, but yeah. Hit, well, it's like a guy at the ballpark winning the lottery. Yeah, but I think I think you're missing the point here. You have a chance. No, I think you're missing you the a, point. <laughs> you have a chance to show some class. Oh, okay. And. Uh, Get the ball back to its rightful owner. I'm just throwing down a challenge, Joe. We go to the ninth. Sheffield coming up. Typical Braves game. Not. Braves 12, <laughs> Dodgers 7 as we go to the ninth inning. Still Greg Maddox's game to win here. The eight best Little League teams in the world have invaded Williamsport, Pennsylvania to crown a champion. Four teams from the U.S. and one each from Canada, Europe, the Far East, and Latin America are battling for the title. The action continues tomorrow with two games on ESPN2. At 2 p.m., Genesis in uh, Michigan versus Greenville, North Carolina. And at 8, tomorrow night, Eastern Time, Cypress, California versus Toms River, New Jersey. The Little League World Series on the deuce. Check it out. And there's one of the uh, former nasty boys, Norm Charlton, who's trying to get his career going again. The Orioles finally gave up on it. The last uh, couple of years, Charlton has uh, not been able to get hitters out consistently. John, now let me give you the real way to show some class with that guy that catches the ball. Yeah. If you really want to show some class, you catch the ball and you donate it to the Hall of Fame. Well, that's what. McGuire would do with it, right? I don't know. I'm just saying give it to the Hall of Fame where it can be on display and everyone gets a chance to see it. Okay. So if they give it back to McGuire, in your estimation, they're what? an idiot. No. <laughs> give it to the Hall of Fame. <laughs> now that's class. I didn't say an idiot. I, but I mean, if, you know, McGuire will put it on his trophy case. And I mean, no, that's the Hall his of prerogative. Fame. Hall of Fame wouldn't offer him a few bucks for it? His prerogative is, you know, but the Hall of Fame, you can put it on display. Gary Sheffield, the hitter, he's had a home run tonight. Well, I agree, it should go to the Hall of Fame. Yeah, put it on display at the Hall of Fame so millions of people that go through the Hall of Fame can get a chance to see, see the ball. Well, Charlie, and that's a foul. I'm sure McGuire will keep the bat. And the bat is actually more important than the ball. Now, here's a question. I heard uh, today, and I, it was an interesting question. Wrigley Field, if a guy from the other team hits a home run to the bleachers, they always throw, throw it back, back into the field. If it was McGuire's 62nd, <laughs> would that diehard bleacher bum at Wrigley Field, does he throw it back? I doubt it. <laughs> there are exceptions now. Oh, I haven't heard of any. Yeah, well, this would be one, I think. They, they were bringing balls to Wrigley Field. In fact, they were had it so that if they did hit one there they'd throw about a dozen on the field you know back well see I got the idea for this whole thing is Sheffield gets a walk and Eric Karras with a chance here for his all time personal best he already has five RBIs in the game he's never had more than six so if he launches one here that will be a career record for him Sports Center follows the game McGuire and Sosa they both went deep so some more than once today. Conversation with David Cohn of the Yankees. He got 18 wins. Broncos training camp report. Sports Center, stay tuned. Just so Sammy Sosa won't be offended, I assume that you feel the same way if Sammy breaks that record. Absolutely, too, right? Yeah. No matter who breaks. Yeah, well, we were you were talking about McGuire, so I thought we'd better get well, Sammy in there. He's leading. Yeah, well, I'm we trying were, to yeah. simplify yeah. my comments. Okay. Didn't want to get too wordy, right? <laughs> now. I heard uh, a, a quote from a fan 
in the bleachers at Wrigley Field. Okay. And uh, Mr. McGuire had just been there last week. And he had, uh, in fact, maybe he's the guy who did catch. A, I think it was a guy who caught a McGuire home run. And he kept the ball. You see Kerry Lightenberg up in the bullpen for Atlanta. And he was offered money for it. Ball in the right center field. But playable. But here's what the guy said. He wanted to give it back to McGuire, and I guess he got an autograph bat and, and whatever. And met McGuire. Maybe an autograph ball or you know, catch a few nice things, got to spend some time with McGuire. And he said, hey, ten thousand dollars, that's nice. But catching a ball like that and being able to present it to Big Mac, that's a once in a lifetime opportunity for a baseball fan. And it says, I didn't want to lose that opportunity. Well, that's and that's a true baseball fan thinking that way. And I mean, look, I hope you are correct. I just do not believe that you are. <laughs> well, I hope that if you're in the bleachers and he hits one out there and you catch it, I'll give it to the Hall of Fame. That you, okay, that you give it to the Hall of Fame. Right. In fact, maybe that's what I should do. Start following him around on Sundays. And sit out there in the bleachers. Two and zero oh the count to Bobby Bonilla slams that one foul down the left field line. Two and one Bonilla over two with two walks. Maybe John next week when we do the game in St. Louis you want to do it from the left field bleachers. Yes. Okay. Maybe we Are you kidding. Yeah we'll do it from the bleachers. I got left kids field. heading for college. <laughs> <laughs> Chipper Jones gets one there back to first. It's a double play. And this one is over. And Greg Maddox wins his 17th. The Braves, I thought they owed him one. And they got it for him. So Atlanta continues on its roll. And for the Dodgers, they score seven against Maddox in five innings. Not nearly enough. So it goes for the 1998 Los Angeles Dodgers. Carlos Perez annihilated early on. Greg Maddox. Wins one despite two big flies from Eric Karras. Sports Center coming up next. John Miller with Joe Morgan. Good night from Atlanta.